All right, I call this meeting of the Isla Vista Community Service District Policy Committee to order at 6.34 p.m. Uh, roll call, Ethan Bertrand. Present. Spencer Brandt. Present. Jay Freeman, present. All present. Also, move uh, to go right to public comment. Um, yeah, moving right to public comment. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. I'm putting in a word in favor of Robert's rules when there's contention. It's a bother if there's not contention, but don't rule it out in case, God forbid you should have contention in 2015. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arthur. All right. Other things that we do not have today. I did not make minutes. Okay. I, I, I essentially spent the weekend moaning in bed, except for managing to, like, continually get called, told in the middle of the night to print more of these murals that are around us. And at some point during this meeting, I'm going to end up in a coughing fit, because that's what happened a little bit earlier today. I did take another three hour nap, which I just woke up from, which is making me together enough in order to come here. Um, and I just was just like, I can try to force myself to put there these minutes, or I could just not. I think that we are the only committee that is actually normally on top of minutes. So, um, summary of agenda. Consider, modifi <coughs> Consider modification to decorum policy. At our last regular board meeting, a member of the public requested, no, I, that's, that's not what I do, I just wanted to just give the summary. Consider modification of decorum policy. Consider an anti-discrimination policy. Consider policies for agendas. Consider policies for meetings. Consider policies for public comments. Consider policies for actions and decisions. Consider clarifications and modifications of our conflict of interest policy. Consider policies, procedures for hiring district staff slash contracting professional assistance. Consider a new regular meeting date. Consider updates to policy committee work plan, future agenda items, and adjourn. Um, uh, so the next item that I have on the agenda always is requests to reorder from the public. Um, the uh, Jeff Bard sent me a thumbs up when I told him that we were having what was going on the meeting today. Um, I don't know if that means that he's intending to show up in order to provide public comment on something or not. Um, you, you sent me a thumbs up. He sent you a thumbs up. Not, okay. not this time, but in the past you sent me a thumbs up. So, it didn't particularly mean anything. Okay. Um, yeah, so we, can, we could go into number one. I know that he's interested in that, but otherwise we could, for example, do that a little bit later in case we think he'll show up at seven. He did show up late for some other meeting we had. I mean, I don't have a problem with moving number one down. All right, let's 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 go to number two then. Consider an anti-discrimination policy. Presentation by Ethan Bertrand. Sure, yeah. Right. Um, so I, I'm trying to remember what the inspiration to this was, but I there was a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, the, the policy that I'm probably most enthused about right now is an anti-discrimination policy, which hasn't come up here yet. Um, it's a basic policy for any organization to have, whether a government organization or a corporation, uh, being that the spirit of the Isle of the Community Services District has been all about inclusion and opportunity. I think it's very fitting that this is one of the first policies that we come up with and one that is included within our preliminary policy manual. Um, I at first was looking to find the Isle of Vista Recreation and Park District policy on this. I Wait, they have one? So they have it in their mission statement, or at least a version of their mission statement that is found in their master plan. However, their master plan is not available on their website at the moment. So I was unable to find that. However, um, I did find one from uh, CSDA's <coughs> database of um, sample documents. And essentially, it has what I'm trying to get at. And this is um, one of the. Jarupa Community Services District, and it is uh, called Fair and Equal Treatment, <coughs> and it's simple. Board members, in the performance of their official duties and responsibilities, will not harass any person or discriminate on the basis of race, religion, color, creed, age, marital status, national origin, ancestry, gender, sexual orientation, medical condition, or disability, a board member will not grant any special consideration, treatment, or advantage to any person or group beyond that which is available to every other person 
or group in similar circumstances. Um, the part that I was especially uh, thinking about was that part A of that, which outlined the various um, groups and identities or identifiers um, that we would not discriminate against. Um, I think that it's a, hey Jonathan, I think it's a rather simple <coughs> uh, thing for us to implement and um, I think it wouldn't be too hard for us to draft one here today. That, that one sounds beautiful to me. I don't know if there's anything that's missing from it. Okay. It sounded good to me. There's a few things that are missing. Okay. Um, one thing that I'll want to add, uh, given the community we serve, is immigration status. Um, I think that'll be good to have. Um, I'm terribly um, sorry. No, you can uh, take it off the window. There's, there's, there's one over there. Okay. Um, and then also, this is missing for me. Um, gender identity. So two, uh, two characteristics that are um, members of our community are threatened by <laughs> given the current times um, that I think we should include most. Other than adding any other um, identities or classifications, are there any other changes that you think need to be made? Well, I think we could perhaps add an opening statement to it, which I've seen. But right now, if we want to type out this shell, yeah. I think that could be easy yeah. to do. Director Freeman, would it be okay if I read slowly and you type? Let's do it. Cool. As long as you're okay with me typing in lowercase, because I only sort of have a shift key. No, I'll, fix it, I'll fix it. Can, can fix it I don't have a T key right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing a control right. uh, paste for every okay. T. Okay. I'll, I'll fix the casing afterwards. Okay. You could just copy and paste it to him, right? I'm a really fast typer. So okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Okay. Board members, comma, in the performance of their official duties and responsibilities, comma, will not harass any person or discriminate on the basis of race, religion, color, creed, age, marital status, national origin, ancestry, gender, sexual orientation, medical condition, or disability, period. And then part B, and we can separate this because and discuss uh, what we want with it. But um, a board member will not grant any special consideration, treatment, or advantage to any person or group beyond that which is available to every other person or group in similar circumstances. So we did, did we want to add um, gender identity yes. and, um, I'm, I'm and immigration, immigration status. status, that's right. Do the uh, list. So I had actually thought gender identity, like I was waiting for it going into it, because um, I was like, at first I thought it was going to be a short list and then it turned out to be a really long list. Uh, and then I, it does have gender. Um, is this, does this mean that we believe that this one to mean physical gender and then another one to mean gender or gender identity? Like, why do we you have gender, change comma, gender, gender, identity. gender identity? Oh, that one, okay. That would be fine. All right. Um, but gender identity or expression. Okay. That's really um, yeah, the that's, important that's part. Good. Because... Cool. I was, just trying, to, I was yeah. just trying to, like, if we have, like, gender, comma, gender identity, I can imagine somebody being like, oh, wait, what? So, sure. Yeah. Um, and then perhaps after our national origin, the uh, immigration status. There is, I see it. Do you want to do immigration status or just legal status as a whole? Uh, legal status, I think, is actually discriminatory, discriminatory way to put it, because a person's not legal or illegal. 
I, mean, I think we actually in some there there there, there are things where maybe we're supposed to um, not as much as I don't always agree with it. As I think we're supposed to discriminate against felons, and that might be considered a legal status. Yeah, well, I guess I was trying to broaden it to why then, because that's one of the things I was thinking of. Well, I mean, I, I guess I was also just thinking, I mean, it's not a huge deal, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, legal status, that's not a good way to describe immigration status. It's, I mean, at this point, that's the whole thing that, like, the Santa Barbara News Press gets in trouble for every time they publish, using the word illegal. So I think it's good. Oh, well, illegal as opposed not illegal status, legal status. But legal, if you're not legal, you're illegal, and we're not saying that we're just catering to. Yeah, I think to defend Spencer for a second, I think the idea would. I mean, I, I, I agree with you on what we should do, but to defend Spencer's thought process, I think the idea is, is that under the law, you <coughs> might have three statuses, and they all are could be legal, but mm -hmm. one of them is like you know status A, and one of them is status B, and so I think that was where you're probably thinking of that. <coughs> and you know, from what I'm seeing, looking at different policies, um, every policy that has gender identity or expression also has a separate sex or gender listed. So if we don't want to list gender twice, okay. but want sex, that's perfect. Sounds good to me. Um, what do we think about Part B? So to clarify my understanding of the goal of Part B is to, to make very explicit, to, 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 to turn it into like personal discrimination. Like I will not give um, a, a person in the audience, a uh, specific, specific person that I know or you know or something, special consideration that I would not give somebody else similar to that person. Right. I think that makes sense. I'm not against having that policy. Yeah, and I, I think it's pretty sta straightforward for how we're expected to operate as elected officials. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I'd say if we, if we want to make it more original at all, <coughs> do that, but I think <coughs> I, I think it's fun. That's the type of thing we want to do. Do we want to change it to directors in the performance of their duties? And oh yeah, change all instances of board member to directors. Just look one more time through the IVRPD policy <coughs> manual to see. I will tell Jonathan. Jonathan. Yes. So I, uh, I got very little sleep last night because I could not sleep because I was coughing all night. And I see you getting a few night, couple night, like a few hours of sleep during the day today. And I am probably going to fall apart into another coughing fit at some point because I did earlier today. So. <coughs> you need a cough suppressant? No, I'm not. I'm not like. Tell, I'm just telling you so you have context to this. If you start coughing. Brutal me. <laughs> yeah, it's like. I'm also not choking at anything. <laughs> just no high on the Yeah. <laughs> Are you sick because of allergies? Uh, I am sick. I also have allergies. Yay, me. <laughs> Since it will not, should it be, will not. will not harass any person nor discriminate on the basis of race, et cetera? Oh, here. Would that be Directors grammatically? will not harass any person or discriminate. Will not harass, will not discriminate. Oh, I see what you mean. Will not harass or discriminate any person on. Oh, I, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would agree with that change, Spencer. Wait, well, that wasn't what I suggested. But oh. let me see what you just. Okay. Said. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm no. saying should it be will not harass any person nor discriminate, rather than will not harass any person or discriminate. Or is that correct? Oh, I think it should be. Or, but. Okay. 
Um, you know, when I, was, I don't have a strong opinion. Okay. I mean, I can see, I can see the argument, but let's leave it. I don't yeah, know. no, my change made no sense. I don't know what I would. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll be running everything. Do we okay. want to put any preface to this policy? Or preface to like a title. We always have a title. Yeah. Oh, true. Anti-discrimination is what we had on the agenda. Do you want to have something different? Yeah, I think anti-discrimination policy sounds good. If there's nothing else, I'd be happy to move this. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to recommend to the Board of Directors the following policy entitled Anti-Discrimination. A. Directors in the performance of their official duties and responsibilities will not harass any person or discriminate on the basis of race, religion, color, creed, age, marital status, national origin, immigration status, ancestry, sex, gender identity or expression, sexual orientation, medical condition or disability. B. The director will not grant any special consideration, treatment, or advantage to any person or group beyond that which is available to every other person or group in similar circumstances. Second. <coughs> right, any public comment on this motion? Uh, hearing none, I think we can go to a vote. Okay, so uh, uh, Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay? Aye. Motion passes, 3-0 at 6. 50, yeah. Uh, I should have saved this with that. Hey, Mr. Chair, I know we didn't have any members of the public present um, before we started this discussion, but just to announce that this meeting is being recorded. Sweet. Did we have anything else for this? Anything else for this? Okay. So, ending agenda item two. So you want to do one or move on to three? Opinions? Um, let's just go to three. All right. Jeff will appreciate it. Michelle. Consider policies for agendas. During this item, we'll consider policies for how agendas are created and disseminated, which will include discussion of how much information provided for agenda items even if that comes out as an attachment to the agenda, as a late attachment to the agenda, or as a brief presentation. In order to make this certain that this is inclusive of yes. okay. all the information sort of related to the agenda that we keep wanting to talk about. Good call. So I know we talked about this <coughs> a little bit at the last meeting, um, and I have completely blanked where we in the process of drafting policy, or were we simply talking about it? Uh, let me switch to pages. Me Tell me that we were just talking about it so that I didn't just duplicate this work. I believe that we were we were just talking about it except for the fact that we had like a list of like stuff that we were interested in having information about and then Ah, uh, that's right. And then that's why we talked for a long time and that provided Oh, and that's when we were talking about the no, um, the one. director report or the Report attachment, the board letter attachment, and a template for such. So we more just brainstormed. That's yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Um, we didn't have like a wording that it sounded like a policy. It just had. That's right. Yeah, we were just one and a half. That's right. I um, guess we sorted with this. This we had this that we decided we didn't. We didn't even do this one. We punted this one. The chairperson and cooperation and managers to prepare an agenda for each regular and special board meeting. Quick question. In the wording of the last motion, was it to recommend that the board of directors adopt the following policy? Oh, great. Okay, cool. Uh, hopefully. Do you, do you remember the yes. word adopt? I did not type a word adopt. Uh, I just wrote. Well, you wouldn't have said board of directors. Yeah, I, I don't think you would have said that, but yeah, I didn't type a word I adopt. I either said adopt or approve okay. uh, one of the things. We'll figure that out. Okay. Yeah, just wanted to. So if you want to go back over to the things that we want. I'll put a bunch of question marks and I can try to listen to it in the audio. Okay. Uh, um, okay, so we wanted to yeah, get background and history, um, who placed the item, um, specific possible actions. Um, okay, sweet, yeah. So I um, went through and kind of made a template for a uh, 
example, it could be a director report, a committee report, basically just a board letter template. Um, I don't know if it's relevant to share that now, because um, I don't know if this is a matter of policy, but in any event, uh, it adheres to this criteria. So. <coughs> Uh, so, Ethan, do you, what are your thoughts on him sharing this? Um, wait, so you're not sure if it's specific to this policy? He's not sure if it is policy. It's a, it's a template for... Um, are we going to make a policy? Like, we could consider making a policy that tells people to use the template. Does that make sense? Yeah, policy? well, that's... Yeah, and I, ha I do have something of a policy written up that I can... Sure. Okay, here's my question. Will the policy be included? I mean, will the template be included in the policy manual? I don't think so. Though. Then let's not share. Yeah, okay. 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 Just but I wanted to let you know. Yeah, cool. um, so that'll be coming. Um, so let me share a document with TJ. And Ethan as well, I suppose. You can be included. Um, and all I'm gonna do is sort at Gmail. That works. And the faster solution I'm used to this problem from before, do that temporarily. Wait a minute. And then we'll okay. <laughs> All right. Do you have copies that you can pass out to the public right now? No. Then we cannot. We can't share it then. No, no, no. This is a policy. Right. But we can't share. Anytime we share materials, they have to be made available to the public right away. Just out of an abundance of caution, perhaps you can okay. tell us where to go. Um. Wait, tell us. Maybe you can make the thing. document public and give you a URL. Define tell us where to go because it's Is not. Is it not a website that you're directing us to? Directing, I'm sharing the document with you on Google Docs. <laughs> okay. All right, so the, um, and the idea, I mean, I, I only I put this up here just because I'm still logging into my Gmail account. I'm going to click on a link and then it's going to go to the, to the document that he shared me. And then everyone will get to see the exact same information as fast as I see it, okay. because it's going to be on this monitor. Okay. So if that's helpful. Okay. Like. <laughs> I think yeah. the just make paper copies that we know we're sharing something. We probably should do that. Um, so you already sent. You already sent it up. Oh okay. uh, yeah. Okay, great. Then I should actually. So I'll preface it by saying it's largely based off of um, a policy for agendas from. Let's see what's this one called. Um, the El Camino, or the Fulton El Camino Recreation and Park District. Um, and I made some minor modifications. Um, and it's a pretty short policy. Um, so I think there are certain areas where it would be worth to expand it. says attachment and then attachments. Hmm. I actually just don't want to change that. You know, hold on. Before, before you change it, I think. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to save a copy of the original PDF of this so we have a correct copy and this. Okay. Download as PDF file. Oh, that actually didn't. I thought that would bring up like a download box and like all sorts of stuff, but it didn't actually. It just goes down there. Okay. All right, so now we can edit it, and then we've got an original copy that we can give to anyone who wants a copy of the document that was provided to the. Great. Thanks. Okay. Oh, it's okay. There's a, it says the board president shall be the sole judge, but then it says the public member requesting the agenda may appeal the general manager's decision. Oh, oops. Yeah. Let's, let's say. 
I, I changed most of the uh, most of the instances of GM to board president. Yeah, so their their hierarchy goes the the general manager in cooperation with the board president shall prepare the agenda. Um, but in that instance, I thought it would be better to change general manager to board president since the board president is a high, higher up on the decision making chain. And, Something weird about the grammar here, but I know what it means, so I don't particularly care to change it. To be devoted to a public request issue at any meeting, like I understand, I, think, I, I guess this is like a compound noun. But do we mean also? I guess actually, I guess there is one question: Is this, is it limitation of the total time to be devoted to public request issues or to a specific public request issue? Oh, I think I think I think, I think it was meant to be specific. All right. I feel like somebody should be reading this out loud. Out loud. I feel yeah. like that somebody should not be me because I'm going to use up my voice quickly doing it. Do you want me to start at the top? Yeah, actually, could you? Yes. Just, I was just thinking about it. Just yeah, yeah. The document. It would yeah. be good for me to read, too. Yeah. Um, policy tidy, title uh, board meeting agenda. One, the secretary, in cooperation with the board president, shall prepare an agenda for each regular and special meeting of the board of directors. Any director may contact the secretary and request that I be placed on the agenda no later than 120 hours prior to the meeting time. Any member of the public may request that a matter directly related to district business be placed on the agenda of a regularly scheduled meeting of the board of directors, subject to the following conditions. A, the request must be in writing and be submitted to the secretary together with supporting documents and information, if any, at least 120 hours prior to the date of the meeting. A1. It is recommended that the directors include a director's report, that the directors include a director's report, and that includes a brief statement of recommendations, summary, background, and attachments. Such a report should be written in professional language. Question, quick. That A and 1, shouldn't that be under number 1, where what you have B should be under number 2? I'm sorry, what, Since what, what in, are you a, in A and a1, you're describing what you described in point number one. You're describing for a board member getting it onto the agenda. So shouldn't that be listed directly under number one? I yes. see why B is yeah, your correct. Oh, I oh, think let's, wait, let's, wait, 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 wait. 2A makes sense to me to have under two. Yeah, he's saying 2A1. Oh, 2A1. Oh, we can move it. How about okay, I? Yeah, 2A1. Yeah. 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 All right, that makes sense. Um, B. The board president shall be the sole judge of whether the public request is or is not a matter directly related to district business. The public member requesting the agenda item may appeal the board president's decision at the next regular meeting of the board of directors. Any director may request that the item be placed on the agenda of the board's next regular meeting. C. No matter which is legally a proper subject for consideration by the board in closed session <coughs> will be accepted under this policy. D. The Board of Directors may place limitations on the total time to be devoted to a public request issue at any meeting and may limit the time allowed for any one person to speak on the issue at the meeting. 3. This policy does not prevent the Board from taking testimony at regular and special meetings of the Board on matters which are not on the agenda which a member of the public may wish to bring before the Board. However, the Board shall not discuss or take action on such matters at the meeting. Four. At least 72 hours prior to the time of all regular meetings, an agenda which includes but is not limited to all matters on which there may be discussion and or action by the board shall be posted conspicuously for public review at the site of the meeting. For it, the agenda for a special meeting shall be posted at least 24 hours before the meeting in the same location. So they have a weird way of doing four. I think it's the first thing that's summing up to me. Instead of just saying, um, in point four, um, at least 72 hours prior to the time of all regular meetings and 24 hours prior to the time of all special meetings. 
they like have this weird four point A, mm -hmm. which kind of could be construed as saying that you don't have like the policy does not like make it so that you have to follow all the other stuff that's in four. It just seems like it'd be less clunky if we move the bulk of four A into four. I agree. Are you going to do that change? Or? Now, do we want to include language for emergency and adjourned meetings there, or no? To um, verify my understanding, an adjourned meeting is a meeting where during the meeting we decide that the meeting is taking too long or is causing some problem with the room or something and that we, quote, adjourn the meeting, unquote, to another location. It could also just be that or at another time we so. want to discuss more. It doesn't need to be that there's like a disruption or, or anything that prevents okay, us. Yeah, but, but, but it could just be, all right, folks, this has been great. I adjourn this to tomorrow morning, okay. same place. Um, I mean, if this is, I, <coughs> if we just wanted to put like, um, <coughs> notice <coughs> will be provided for adjourned and emergency meetings if required for long, we could do that. Or if we want this to be a guide for how to do that, we can look up right now what the proper qualifications are. Or something. Particularly extra complicated about the adjourned meeting one. There is, or you're saying what is? There is. Like the emergency one actually. The like emergency was the very tools. clear in the law. Yeah, it but just the says, like, here are the, I think there's three or four circumstances. And most of them were like, there's a threat to public, like the public building, the premises, or there is like a natural disaster or an act of terror. You yeah, know, I, I meant the agenda related issues to it because um, there was terms of noticing yeah there's something about oh well with that I think what you're talking about is for a certain amount of time you don't have to re-notice or re-agendize the meeting but if it goes past like two days or so whatever that date qualification threshold is then you have to send out a new notice that sounds like the kind of complexity I'm talking about Through. well one of the things that we could do um, it would be super easy. Is we could cite the code. We wanted to move this this under two under one. I can just go ahead and do that one. Oh yeah. You have to do push that first B under two to A, right? Oh, it's not something you. It, it's like an automatic. Wait, wait. No, this isn't a real one. This is fake. Fake news. This is yeah. This is actually fake news. Um, I think this is real. No, this is fake news. Too.
So I, I think there's a little bit of govern, uh, government code at the bottom that talks about uh, emergency situations and uh, emergency meetings. Um, I'm going to go try to find language on the jury. You don't have your um, board member best practices manual on you, right? No, I don't. There's a great recommended <coughs> information in there. I left mine at home. About um, what? Just really concisely what the requirements are for agendizing those meetings. Well, the code's not that long. I can read board it. member's best practice manual. I mean, I could just paste it. Um, the CSDA training that we attended. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so I guess we purchased it with our own money. That's true. I mean, the, we, we, this is just here for us to read, right? Yeah. All right. When you started formatting it, I was wondering if you were intending to put this in the policy. Our policy manual is just it's a copy of the copy California of California government. California government. <laughs> Open in public might have a really good concise version on their um, agenda section. Yes, on page 32 of Open in Public 5, um, it has agenda requirements for adjourned meetings and agenda requirements for uh, emergency meetings. Less than a quorum. That's interesting. Well, I guess that could be like if for some reason you lost your quorum. All right, we're adjourned. Um, adjournment must be posted within 24 hours. It doesn't actually state, in, in, they don't bother stating here how long it has to, I'm just presuming until the meeting occurs. But.
But you know what? Here's what I'm seeing. Under notice requirements for special meetings, it says there is no express agenda requirement for special meetings, but the notice of the special meeting effectively serves as the agenda and limits the business that can be transacted or discussed. Yeah. Um, even with that, I'm still comfortable with what we have because it is our internal policy and we're saying that we will have an agenda. Yeah. How do you notice the meeting without? I think it's like, it's like special meetings are supposed to be an incredibly narrow topic. And so that, that, that's why I've been bringing up during some of our special meetings that we shouldn't, for example, yeah, have a yeah, concept of like new agenda items and like yeah, really it start, yeah. So how, how? Oh, well, for this, so the, the notice of a special meeting serves as an agenda. Oh, certainly. Yeah, so, but I'm, like I said, I'm comfortable with what we have on that. Um, and then for emergency meetings, it says the special meeting notice provisions apply to emergency meetings, except for the 24-hour notice. News media that have requested written notice of special meetings must be notified by telephone at least one hour in advance. I think that can be a separate policy. Based on what I'm seeing here, the two really um, defined roles of agendas are for mainly regular meetings, but then there's that special meeting procedure. We don't well. have to include all this in our policy as long as we don't make our policy disclude it. Like if our policy, for example, <laughs> says that we're say, not doing this. Yeah, if it doesn't say that we... Yeah. yeah. Well, and if you look at point five that I just wrote up, oh. so what I did is I copy and pasted the uh, the things that the law says can be um, cause for a declaration of an emergency situation. Um, but then I also, I didn't go too far into it, I just put at the end, pursue it, gov code 54956.5, so that any person who actually finds themselves in an emergency situation would just look up that code. And it's pursuant to? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty comfortable with what we've done down there. Are you typing? Oh, I see. I think what that should be is may adjourn any regular or special meeting. You can also no, you can also go look at the code at the bottom. Okay. It's confusing to me too, but I just wanted to stay consistent. Which section? Well, simple one is an open and public. It mentions that you can have an adjourned or readjourned. So you can have an adjourned meeting get adjourned. Oh, okay. I thought that readjourned meant. Having okay, if you want to go back to the code, so right. yeah, go for Let me it. see. For purposes of this section, emergency situation means both of the following. I wish they had said either of the following. That's just idle conversation.
Spencer, do you know if we can adjourn an emergency meeting to a specific time or location? I don't think, based off my reading of the law, we can. Right, so then should we specify? Sure, I'll do it the same way the code does it. Perfect. Right, because actually, the, the wording right now for adjourned meeting is, uh, is just extra words, because it says any meeting or adjourned meeting. But an adjourned meeting is just a meeting. way too much of a computer programmer. Like, I'm, I'm just staring at this and I'm like, what happens if the board of directors decides to adjourn a, a meeting to a time in the past? Do they immediately encounter a Brown Act violation? And can I exploit this situation? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't notice the meeting. They didn't even cancel it. Uh, so, um, Spencer, mm -hmm. the um, copy of the order or notice of adjournment should be conspicuously posted on or near the door of the place of, I think it was the previous meeting. Like, that's previous is the wrong, is the wrong way of putting it too, Greg. The, 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 like, like, it's the, me the meeting where the adjournment occurred, not the, not the meeting that the adjournment Yes, created. the adjourned meeting. There we go, there we go. That makes sense. I see you have a copy of the order or notice of adjournment here in the, have you seen a place where it uses both? Uh, the, uh, that's copied and pasted from the okay. law. Okay. All right, I'm comfortable with this section on agendas for different. <coughs> Are five and six specific to this agenda, though? I'm not sure if those should be in this policy there or, or their own separate policy. Specific to this agenda? This agenda policy that we're drafting. Um, so to me, yeah. what's going on here is that this is a policy on, on a policy on like agenda noticing. And five is telling you, it both indirectly tells you that you can hold this meeting, but more importantly, it's saying that you can do so without complying with the 24 hour special meeting notice requirements. We could reword this to just to like make it, make that more frontal. Like um, the board of directors 
need not comply with the 24-hour special meeting notice requirements if holding a special and emergency meeting pursuant to. And then here what we're doing is we're stating the, like the important part of this one is the, a copy of the order of notice of adjournment. But yeah, I see what you're kind of going at is just like part of this is now turning into a policy on how an adjourned meeting happens in addition to how an adjourned meeting is noticed and agendized. Arguably, if we, well, if we if I we mean, I, speaking of agendas, we are noticed to for number four to consider policies oh, for meetings. No, no, I don't think Ethan means that we're not allowed to talk about it today. I think he's talking about like how we organize it in the manual. That like yeah. this is this is. But about what I'm noticing. saying is that if we wanted to make it a separate policy, then we could. Yeah. Yeah, I think mean, Ethan's just saying that we should. And I think I, I sort of agree with him, except for the yeah. Like, but I still feel, but I do feel like these two, both of these points, should be in this policy. They just might be worded differently in this policy. Well, let's copy and paste these, or let's just space them down the page. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm gonna say that I, mean, I appreciate why. Natalie and Bob want us to do some of this stuff, but at the same time, I will also state that at some point we can just specify pursuance to some section we will notice and agendize meetings and then move on to other things that we want to get done with our district and come back to this in a year or something. Just saying. Yeah, no, I, 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 are they the ones who recommended this? Not this, but the idea of essentially having text in our in our policy manual that constantly ex re-explains the law such that if you follow the text of the policy manual, you don't have to know the law. Um, that is something that... Yeah, I, I don't necessarily... I, I think there should be a level of proceduralism and helpfulness to the policy manual, but... Because essentially... I mean, at a certain point, it's just like, we should just be copying and pasting government code. Yeah, if we really want to go into it, and I'm not prepared to do that. Yeah, because essentially, this is essentially everything in this policy except for a few of the specific things that you had originally, such as the 120 hours prior and the mechanism by which members of the public can put things on. Essentially, like we're we're at, we're at the point where we're just copying and pasting law and then summarizing it, and hoping that we summarized it correctly. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I like that. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at five and six. I think we should. Consider that language under something else. Okay. So I, I think for the purpose of this discussion, it's helpful that we thought okay. about those, but now seeing that there's no explicit yeah. gender requirement within them, and that maybe it's confusing if they fall under this this policy, yeah. we can. I, I, I essentially agree with you. Okay. And I will also say that I'm a strong advocate for let's make the policies, and then if we need to change things around once we have the entire essentially finished draft of the board policy manual, then we can start looking at the numbering structure and what goes where. Um, so if there's nothing else specifically on uh, everything that's on the first page of this, um, then I'd like to make a motion. Oh, I, I have a, another big one. Oh, okay. Right. Um, which I think we began to speak about last week, and that's uh, where I think um, how we have it it's it's on the concern of um, of multiple members of the board discussing something we placed on the agenda, and I think I raised this concern at the last meeting or this idea that I think we should make it more um, the board president is responsible for compiling the agenda and taking agenda requests, and then the board secretary's role is related to strictly distributing and making public information. Is that something that that I like that. Is that something that was discussed in brief last week? I remember this coming up. I presume it could only have come up during the previous meeting. I remember it coming up, but I don't remember what our conclusion was. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that we <laughs> not sure that we reached a conclusion uh -huh. um, at the last meeting. One moment, let me pull up some supporting documents. And uh, and I will just say that my, the intention behind specifying the secretary's role largely stemmed from the fact that 
prior to this policy being edited to fit our district, it created the general manager in cooperation with the board president instead of the secretary in cooperation with the board president. And so to a certain extent that in the absence of a general manager, um, we're going to continue to have, um, uh, let's say, some differences um, when it comes to roles for things like this in the time period where we don't have a GM. Totally. But here's here's my thought on this. And Jay, if you could scroll up to the top of the policy yeah. so we can see that. So the general manager, <coughs> in, in, other, um, in other policies that we've slightly adjusted to fit our role, the general manager is the chief executive officer mm -hmm. of a of a special district and is involved in their, their role in this. For some special district, is it's, it's written the general manager in cooperation with the board president. But for many, it's also written the board president in cooperation with the general manager or receiving assistance from the general manager. And I think the point there is that it's the board president working with um, the executive officer of the organization. But as far as a secretary's role, I think this, the secretary is responsible strictly for, for making these documents available and keeping track of the documents. And do you want to pull up the secretary policy? Okay. The what? The secretary policy. Yeah. And, and my idea may also involve, um, should we go forward with this, doing something to change that, but we'll make it clear for pulling this up is strictly to inform us on this yeah. discussion for the agenda. Definitely. Um, but my thought right now is um, that while it's worked well for us, I think our, our initial goal with this was for the secretary to help get everything out. Um, but I think it should be clarified that um, since the board president is the person receiving and making the decision on, um, on whether to place an agenda item or not, um, it should be the board president who makes who makes the, the agenda and then sends it off to the, the secretary. But let's see what we have in policy right now. Note that there's D at the beginning of the next page because I apparently failed that day. Yeah, so the language in this, the in cooperation <coughs> differs from the, or in consultation um, differs from the uh, language we have here, which is in cooperation. So we might as well just change it for consistency to say. But could you go up to the board president's responsibilities? Right. Or down? Maybe? Oh, there. There we go. Okay, so in this one, it doesn't say anything about agendas. That's right. Can you scroll down a get at the crux of what your suggestion is for this, for amending this part of the draft? Sure. The board president shall prepare an agenda for regular special meeting of the board of directors. Having an, and changing it, any director may contact the board president and request that an item be placed on the agenda no later than 120 hours prior <coughs> to the meeting. What I'm, what I'm recommending is changing the responsibility. 
Um, okay. And why I'm recommending that is kind of, uh, like I said, so far what we've done has worked, but, um, and I understand that we want to have a pol we want our policy to fit our current needs, but I actually think that we've create our current system is very abnormal, um, and recognizing that it's going to be unique, but I think it's kind of just a little bit twisted as far as roles right now. Um, and, okay, so and do, you want to, do you want to amend the secretary policy right now too? No, because it's not on our agenda. But okay, so you want this policy to be in place, and then go back and do that. We can see how time. we want to do this going forward. But right, like I'm not sure if we want to. If we were to amend this now, I'm not sure that we'd want to adopt it right away. If, if we'd want to bring it back um, to a time when we can consider the other policy I, as well. I I I I don't think that we are. My, my impression is that we're not, a, we're constructing a new policy. We're not agendized about a specific subsection of the document. We're agendized to make policies related to agendas. And one of the policies that we have related to agendas is this line. That is purely about agendas in my mind. Right, but I so mean. I, th I think we're allowed to modify that sentence. I don't think it would be. Uh, I don't think like we're legally prohibited from doing well, it, but I, I, I'd I, like to, if we were going to amend the officer's policy, I'd like to agendize that separately. Okay. I mean, I, I will say that if we're unable to make these sorts of changes, it essentially means that we have to plan out the kind of mod that, like... Yeah. I, I like see this, 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 this hamstrings us so hard in our ability to modify the documents if we're not allowed to modify things related to the thing we're talking about just because they are in a section of the documents that we put them in the wrong place before or something. I mean, thus know? far we've added agenda items, amend this, consider amending that. I think if we're... No, our agenda items, from my perspective, have all been considered policies related to, and then a topic. And so, and this, this to me is an agenda related to a, a topic. Well, I think we're getting... I, I don't think this is... Policy. I don't think this prohibits us from, from drafting this new policy, whether or not okay. we have to amend this now. You say you don't think that the agenda prohibits us from modifying that? No, from drafting the policy that we're working on right now. Oh, I'm saying no. I don't think that the policy that exists, even if it's not uniform where we're with what we're ending up with in this new policy, I don't think that's a reason for us not to consider a new policy right now. Oh, well, I'm not saying it's not a reason to. I thought that you wanted to do it. Oh, cause I, I do want to consider I, I this. I don't want to consider in this meeting changing the other policy. All right, but well, I, I, I will vote no if we're going to recommend this motion then because it's a conflict with our existing policy. Then but, um, what if we were to bring them both back? That's fine. But at least, at least right. draft well, something here to bring them back. I, I actually that's okay. agree with Jay. I think we are agendized to modify that. It's consider policies for agendas. We'll consider policies for how agendas are created and disseminated, which will include the discussion of how much information is provided for agenda items even if that comes out of, well, okay, blah, blah, blah. But I think the key language there is how agendas are created and disseminated. And, and I'll also say this, which is on another level, which is I don't think that we should lose too much sleep over the roles right now, given that we're probably going to change them in the coming future. You see what I'm saying? Right, but I want to change them now, I guess, is why I'm bringing it up. Okay. Be because the thing here is just the concern of if, I mean, also we it's hard for us to run into a, a situation where we have a serial meeting because of this. It hasn't happened yet, and it's pretty hard because we have the, we can speak with up to two people, mm -hmm. and all we're talking about is placing something on the agenda. Mm -hmm. But I still, want to streamline that because it should be the director contacting the president. Um, and then this also is related to something that I want to go next to, which I brought up at the last meeting, of having something within this policy to on the section at the end of our meetings where, um, say if the board president didn't want to place something on the agenda, or you just want to be sure it gets to the agenda without asking the board president outside of a meeting, we, we can vote there. Mm -hmm. um, 
So what I want it to be is either um, in the, the discretion of the board president or by a popular, well, by, by a vote of the yeah. members of the board. And what that does is obviously we can't, given our current setup, have a system where we do two people are required to sponsor something because that inevitably could, that could easily end up in a serial meeting. Um, and again, that's why we don't have that as our operating procedure right now and have never done that. But um, my point is I think it should be um, for, for contacting a member of the board outside of the meeting to get something on the agenda, I think that should be with the board president. Um, and to, to the safest way and um, the safest way to get something on the agenda, I don't know if safest is, is the right way, but where you can get support from other colleagues would be at the end of a meeting. Um, that's so, what I envision here. But I mean, if, if you two like it as it is, then we can move on. But my, my biggest thing is just, I, I think it's the role of the board president. And then when we do get a general manager in consultation with the general manager. So my, my thought process is that we can, I, I feel that we can make both changes that you want now. Another thing I would say though, is that if you, want us to not make the other change now because of um, um, you feel we're not allowed to modify that part, then I would say that we should put this in, this one in and have it say the, the, the thing you don't want with the positions and then agendize for the next meeting to fix the positions and then make that like a... We'll and fix it. this. Yeah, well that, that would allow us to fix the positions. Just anywhere in the document where the positions say that you've got the second, like we'll go through and just find all of the roles and fix them. Yeah, well, we well, roll the document. Yeah, because I, I, I'm, I'm imagining that if we were to take action at the board level to uh, fill that vacant general manager position, then we would have something like that, which is, I, th I think is kind of what I was getting at in regards to the, the roles thing and the changing of the roles. But then already we have adopted policies with general manager mentioned, such as the donation policy. But we're actually agendized today in order to look at removing that. Oh, wait, wait you said donation, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, the donation yeah, policy has it? Yeah, conflict of interest. Oh. What did the donation policy say with the? Well, in the absence not, of a general manager. Oh, in president. the absence, okay, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, so it, w it would either be that we went back and added the phrase in the absence of the general manager, the board president, um, or, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is I, I like we cross that bridge when we come to it, if that makes sense? Sure. So again, so again I, I either feel like we, like, cause I, I I'm okay with Ethan's changes. We could just do them today. Another option is is that, I mean, if, if I mean, I think you yourself had said that we'd like to make some of these changes, and we could, we if we can't make the other change today, we shouldn't change it here. And so then we would punt all of this until next time. But we could put this policy in place with secretary in consultation with board president today, and then fix the wording of secretaries and board presidents and how they manipulate things at the next meeting. Okay, but let me ask, what do you mean by consultation with the board president? What is that consultation right now? Because I think we already have it clear that the board president and the board secretary are working on this meeting agenda. But what I'm trying to do here is just explain what that protocol is, not just mentioning the board president. But you're also changing it, like, which I, I agree with. You're changing it in a way where it's like right now it's that the secretary will prepare it. And then the secretary consults with the board president, but the secretary is still the person preparing the agenda. And you would like it to be that the board president. So do you president want to flip it prepares for the it. time being? But I don't think we can flip it unless we also change, which I think we can. Secretary of the board policy subsection C. So yes, either sir. today we should put into place this, or we should agree that we can change both of them, and then we can change both of them. Or we should not do anything today and punt it until two weeks from now. Like, but to me, those are the three consistent options. Yeah. 
I think we are allowed to do any of them. Uh, I, Ethan believes that we should not do the one that modifies this today. And so then between the subsequent two, it's about whether we feel it's interesting to get any policy in here at all initially, because it might be nice to have yeah. some of this well, me mechanism by yeah. which members of the public can do stuff sooner than waiting another two weeks, or another three yeah, weeks. I, I, no, four weeks, right? Because we're going to be, it's, it's uh, the next week isn't a normal week. So we'd be waiting next week, then so three weeks of the policy meeting, four weeks, so it'd be a month before we could get a policy modification in. Um, if we didn't do anything today, I mean, I certainly think we're agendized to make those changes. Um, and I think that we can make those changes if we wanted to. Um, yeah, but what, I, what I'm what I'm saying also though is is that if we didn't want to make both changes, we, um, uh, we could still make we could still I mean like it doesn't make anything worse by putting this language in because it simply further cements something that we can change later. But and that's already the case. It just but it does give us sections two B C all this other stuff that we yeah. which didn't have. Okay, well then I think we'll go that route. Of, all right, so of adopting would, like this policy and then later on coming in and fixing and the rules. Fixing the rules. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's going to put it's going to continue this procedure that we've had in place, which I'm not yeah. happy with. But, but we, we do have it in place. Yeah. And, so. if, and if we if we punt, and if we punted making any changes, that would also happen. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So, is there anything else in terms of the substance of the policy that we want to change um, before it gets moved? I say move, and maybe we'll find an amendment to make. All right. Um, um, so there's um, this. This. This is here. This is weird. I'm just gonna. Oh, I'm yeah. Just gonna that's do not supposed right. to be that way. And you can. Okay. Wait, and that no matter which is that supposed to be its own substance? Yeah, but but the, but the letters are all wrong. We 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 punted the letters, so we can try to fix them now. Yeah, because this, this shouldn't be B either, right? Like that was the thing that I screwed up initially. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. B. I, I'm just gonna move the entire thing without saying numbers, and then we can go back in and mix it and like change it. Um, I move that the committee recommend to the board of directors the following policy entitled Board of Directors Meeting Agendas. The Secretary, in consultation with the Board President, shall prepare an agenda for each regular and special meeting of the Board of Directors. Any director may contact the Secretary and request an item to be placed on the agenda no later than 120 hours prior to the meeting time. It is recommended that the directors include a director's report that includes a brief statement of recommendations, summary, background, and attachments. Such a report should be written in professional language. Any member of the public may request that a matter directly related to district business be placed on the agenda of a regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Directors, subject to the following conditions. The request must be in writing and must be submitted to the Secretary together with the supporting documents and information, if any, at least 120 hours prior to the day of the meeting. The Board President shall be the sole judge of whether the public request is or is not a, quote, matter directly related to district business, unquote. The public member requesting the agenda item may appeal the Board President's decision at the next regular meeting of the Board of Directors. <coughs> Any director may request that the item be placed on the agenda of the Board's next regular meeting. No matter which is legally a proper subject for consideration by the Board in closed session will be accepted under this policy. The Board of Directors may pay, place limitations on the total time to be devoted to a public request issue at any meeting and may limit the time allowed for any one person to speak on the issue at the meeting. This policy does not prevent the Board from taking testimony or regular and special meetings of the Board on matters which are not on the agenda which a member of the public may wish to bring before the Board. However, the Board shall not discuss or take action on such matters at the meeting at least 72 hours prior to the time of all regular meetings and 24 hours prior to the time of a special meeting an agenda which includes but is not limited to all matters on which there may be discussion and slash or action by the board shall be posted conspicuously for public review at the site of the meeting. Okay. Second. Um, so you said the here. Um, yeah. Um, you want the? Uh, no, I'll fix that. Okay. So. Okay, that amendment is friendly with the second. 
and I, I and you slowed down here and made me realize that this may um, any director may contact the secretary and request that an item be placed on the agenda, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So taking out two friendly with the second. Is there any public comment on this motion? Seeing none, uh, Ethan, voting? Oh, I have board comment. Oh, you have board comment. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, one thing I noticed. So if we have the secretary responsible for what we were discussing before, if when you go down to C, it's the board president shall be the sole judge of whether the public request is... To be. It says C, I know. But it's B. That's fine. Um, <laughs> But I'm asking the work of the board president there. Is that still something we want to keep? If we're that's an interesting point because right now the secretary is the person who's constructing the, the agenda. So why is it that well? I mean, I guess if that's if maybe that's explaining how oh, the secretary consults with yeah the board. Secretary is consults with the board okay, president that's to fine. find out, for example, what will be that. Yeah, that would be one yeah. way. My so my oh, thought sorry. in putting sticking board president into that slot instead of secretary. Was that it just seems uh, like it would better serve the public if the person who you're asking to put an item on the agenda is the president, rather like is as high up to commit chain as possible, cool. so to speak. So then that'll be the same logic I use when we explore this next time yeah. for for the top ones. Okay. Oh yeah, sure. certainly. Yeah. Cool. My, that was my only question. Okay. So any other board comment? Any more public comment? Are you ready to vote yet? Okay. Uh, voting Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay, aye. Motion passes 3 0 at 7 51 p.m. And I'm just going to make a horribly formatted copy of this because it's already horribly formatted in the. Oh, but this is actually. Oh, yeah, get rid of that bottom. So it's the bottom two paragraphs. <laughs> So it gets to, there we go. All right. Back to the agenda. So do we have more stuff to talk about on agendas? There could be all sorts of stuff to talk about on agendas. I've got, I guess, I've got one thing that could fall under agendas. We could also talk about it under meetings. We could also just talk about it now because we're in the crossover path between agendas and meetings. Um, so, uh, earlier during our meeting, Ethan brought up, um, he, he said something like, you know, we didn't have any members of the public here at the time anyway, but we may as well announce now that this meeting is being recorded. We normally have that on the agenda, which is why I bring it up as in a policies for agendas construction. Um, I don't want it to be my job. That's like my, my, the only concern I have is I don't want it to be my job that the meetings are recorded. And so if the, if the, if, if the board has not directed anybody to record the meetings, why is it on the agenda that the meetings are being recorded? Like, what if I don't show up and it's on the agenda that well, just says so you the know, meeting has been recorded? recording meetings as well. Oh, okay, cool. That <laughs> solves that question. I'm not at the moment, but. Okay. The majority of meetings that I've chaired, I've recorded. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I've recorded some meetings. All right, great. All right, that solves that. I was just, I was just yeah. like, at some point, I was just like, what if I don't show up to the meeting? And it's just like, it's announced that it's being recorded. It's on the agenda that it's being recorded. And it's like, I don't show up and record it. And people are like, oh, all right. Yeah. All right and I, and I, my understanding is that reporters at the meeting record frequently as well. Okay. So, so is the so reason even, why we have it on the agenda just to like make it clear to people who don't like being recorded that the meeting gets recorded? Just so there's no surprises. No surprises. Yeah, but it I may actually so. it Certainly. may actually be if if we know it's being recorded, I do think we're legally obligated right. to share. Which is and, and, and for what it's worth, I actually do think that um, that's wrong way of putting it. I currently am under the impression that the recordings that I take are public record. That uh, they you can public records act request and I think you, and the one thing that might be awkward is I think you might be able to public record your request, Spencer, and get it for me. I'm still working on that part. Uh, I actually have a lawyer working Wait, on it. Wait, say that second. I think you might be able to public records act request, Spencer, and force a recording out of me to Spencer. And we're, I, like I said, I have a lawyer looking into that, and um, I, had, I had some initial stuff from a lawyer came back on that today, and I'm, I'm still going through, and we're still working on this. Interesting. 
Um, well, I guess I guess the issue is sort of moot if the recordings are being posted on the internet publicly. Yeah, but it's we're we're we're, we're still working on, on on that aspect of it. But I just I just wanted to make certain that like yeah, because because I just don't want to become my job accidentally to do this uh -huh. without. And it's just like well, it's on the agenda. But you're recording. You're, yeah, people record stuff. Okay, that's fine. Well, right. let me also just say for the record that I'm under the impression that when you record a meeting or when it might be different if I record the meeting. My impression is that because the board has not taken action to designate someone to record meetings, um, that means that there is no obligation for us to do so. Um, the, the thing that I'm thinking of right now is um, what would happen if the board went into closed session and whether or not there could be a recording that was made of that, um, because in some cir in circumstances where boards have designated that this is the procedure for recording the meeting, and these recordings are owned by the district, then there is a way for you to record closed session if the board wanted to, but otherwise that would not be something um, that can be done. My understanding is that a board is only required to record co closed session if um, the court has found it um, guilty of past actions and as a condition of action that the court has taken it says that you must record these meetings. Usually um, a written record is, I, I believe, standard. And that written record is not something that can be requested by members. A r written record of actions? Oh, all actions will be have to be disclosed yeah, immediately yeah. after. But I'm talking about what what's discussed, record? just so people remember what's discussed, like taking notes. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I see. So I, I, but anyway, I don't think... Yeah, that's, that's, this is like the boundary between three and four. Um, I mean, like, in perspective of three, I was just like... Um, but the thing, that, the thing that Spencer was just saying about... Um, that if that if if we directed somebody to record something, that's why like if it's on the agenda, somebody really needs to record it, right? But other people are prepared apparently are already recording them. I I, so. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think that the from my perspective, the reason for having that is to state the obvious, which is that the meeting is being recorded, because whether or not we record it, other people in the audience are most likely recording it. So I I like maybe we could see ourselves in a situation where for whatever reason like you didn't come and record and like Ethan or I or any other board members forgot and there were no reporters there and we have a meeting where there was no recording. But I don't think that like having that on our agenda obligates someone to record it. And how would we even know if it wasn't recorded? Are we legally required to record meetings? I believe no. that we are only required to provide recordings if they are recorded. And so all we're responsible for doing is having a written record by minutes. We are actually, so one, one thing, one thing that, all right, so this is, we are now much more talking about four. So the, um, uh, the, um, we're not, as far as I understand, even like we we've been doing this thing where we keep track of the um, like firsts and seconds and everything. As far as I know, we just have to we actually all we have to do is just track who voted yes or no on what motions, like on what just on what like actions we tried to take. Um, we have to essentially every every vote that occurs, and it must all votes must have the complete record of everyone who voted. Um, we, we can we can simulate that quickly by doing, but but it was actually it was an interesting thing is it's like the the goal of a voice vote in a lot of those Robert's Rules of Order was to get an approximate vote when you have like hundreds of people in the audience and you are willing to accept an approximate vote, then you'll go to voice vote and then just like have people cheer on either side essentially, um, but that we essentially have to record the moral equivalent of a roll call vote for every vote that we take and that's it. Um, what, do you, what do you mean by like? Like my understanding is legally required that the only, we don't have to have any description of what we talked about during the meeting or anything except for when we take votes, we have to record what every individual director voted on what. Um, 
and we don't like the concept of moving in seconds. I like I we keep track of that. I honestly am not entirely certain why we keep track of that because I I, 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 like, I would almost say that it turns into this weird thing where it makes it seem like well the person who moved it then becomes like they get extra special brownie points for having moved it or something, and then like well what is it that you want to you want you feel like you want to be the person who moved some certain things was related to your thing. It's like well at some point we're we're a board we're working together and we're all just voting on stuff. I don't um, I don't think that's this. I think it's for. Um, posterity of the motion, if there's any confusion about what was said, do we know who it was that said the motion? If there, because I know we have ran into situations where we weren't quite sure whether the motion, as was recorded in the minutes, was the same as what was stated during the meeting. And we do a pretty good job, I think, of making sure that that doesn't happen. But the one of the things that would help were you in a situation where you're trying to determine um, what was actually said, knowing who made the motion and who seconded would be helpful. So in a lot of ways, when, when I've been formatting the minutes as secretary, I've been doing that based off of the way that IBRBD does their minutes um, and some other agencies do their minutes. And if it goes above and beyond, then that's cool to me. Um, what else am I going to say regarding this, though? Um, I totally lost. Yeah, it. I think it's I think it's cool to have more detail in there. Yeah. But I'm the. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've, I pointed out before. I just I am so horrifically bad at maintaining this sort of. I just. But like the. Um, uh, having more detail in minutes, I, I think, is always interesting because I mean, like, I, I have personally been really annoyed going back and only finding action minutes from the Coastal Commission, for example. But, um, but I do appreciate more detail in, in them. We got on this though because we were talking about recording and having on the agenda, and then. Hmm. How did we transition into the minutes? We're talking about, we're talking about what we're legally obligated to do in terms of record. Keeping. Oh, record, yeah, because we're talking about like whether we're whether we're required. As far as I know, we're not required to keep. No, I'm sorry, wrong way of putting it. We're not required to take audio or video recordings. Okay. Um, I think it'd be cool if we did. Um, and I, but I, I just, I just don't want to end up in the position of being the, the person who's forced to do it. Yeah, I just understand. don't want that to happen. Okay. Um, is um, is this item four time sensitive, or was that more just put on to give us broad discussion ability? Four was put on because um, at the end of our last meeting, I believe it was, I believe it was you, um, said that well, from our work plan, how about we agendize to the next meeting? Agendas, meetings, actions, and decisions. And so I simply threw okay. them all on here and summarized the information from the work plan in the little description here so that we would have some clue what, what it meant. Okay. But we have no particular need to do anything on the item today other than, well, let's talk about agendas, meetings, actions, and decisions. Cool. The so actions and decisions part of the meetings was what I really wanted oh, okay. to do today. All right. But I, I think it's good. <laughs> So does anyone have anything else to talk about under consider policies for meetings? No. You said no? No. Okay. Public comment? Um, so do you want to move on to five or six, Ethan? Um, let's move on to, and, and you put that number five for me also, didn't you? Yeah. 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 And now I'll just tell you why I wanted it in the, in the other one. Um, which so we can we can talk about them all today. So I just wanted to have oh, it as a top level item that was like very clear what we were that we was being talked about. And yeah. I mean, my big thing was um, open and public really speaks about the need for the public space on the agenda. Um, and we didn't include a specific thing for it in the agenda policy, but perhaps it's something that we can look at in the future. Um, anything I wanted to do that with that was related to agenda. For example, for regular meetings, it's required that you have a public comment on your agenda, but for special meetings, it's not. 
for special meetings, you just have to make sure that the public is able to speak um, specific to agenda items. Yeah, um, well, that's because the yeah, because the special meetings are yeah. So I mean, I, I agendize this specifically to allow for it may affect the wording on the agenda. Yeah. So if you wanted to now go and add a policy, first of all, we're allowed to do it because we're still in a meeting where right. three was agendized, and I think we can do it under five. So what do you, you want? Do you want to add in a uh, policy for there will be a um, public comment item on the agenda, and how to do it for regular versus special? Well, do you all think that that is something that should be in policy, or should we just defer to the law for that? Um, I don't. I don't think it's pressing. Like I don't have a strong opinion. Okay. I don't have a strong opinion I on that. I think it's either. best practices to okay. include public comment on your special meeting I agenda. Mean, okay. And I wouldn't see any reason why anyone preparing an agenda would try to exploit that of all things. Right. I think that, that would be detrimental to whatever it is they were trying to not have people speak on. People would just be more angry. All right, then I have nothing more for that. For all of five? Well, yeah, I mean, okay, the only reason right. that I asked Okay, for, I was The only reason that, because <laughs> if you were, I spent so long writing this. Well, you shouldn't have, because, six, wait, but time out. When I requested it, I made it very clear multiple times that I just want public <laughs> comment to be considered under the other one. So anything here isn't for what I was asking. Yeah, okay, that's like, fine. I was very pretty that's cool. that I wanted that's to cool. on the other. That's cool. I, I thought, I thought it just specifically had come up that we were talking about public comment also as to how it was, like, underneath, a, like, about agenda items. And that's, this is, and this is about, because I did bring up at the time, it was like, are we talking about just the statement on the agenda, or are we talking about how public comment actually gets structured? You said the latter one, so it's, all right. I was saying the public. I'm sorry, I mis I'm sorry, I misunderstood. No, it's okay. I mean, we didn't have a really good way of <laughs> fixing the <laughs> But that's why I kept saying, leave it within, not leave the on. All right, moving on. Oh, public comment. Yeah, um, while it's here yeah. and being considered, yeah. I was wondering if the directors would be willing to look into sunshine ordinances that are in place in other districts and consider one for this one. I will add that to our subsequent things. So I saw sunshine ordinance for what? So like San Francisco has something called the sunshine ordinance, as do other located cities. Um, and the, it's, a, it's like a, a set of policies that are go above and beyond the Brown Act as far as allowing for. Oh, I, yeah. I heard sunset. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, consider policies for actions and decisions. During this item, we'll consider policies for how boards and committees are able to take action and make decisions, including how votes are taken and recorded, how quorum is established, the ways that an action can take, how ordinances are executed, and something just called enacting clause. Because I'm going to be honest, I didn't remember what that meant. <laughs> it was oh, no, we talked about <laughs> Wait, do you need a refresher? I need a refresher. I'm yeah, sorry. so when you have a, a resolution that says, whereas the policy committee is the best committee ever, and then it has a bunch of other whereases, then it says, now therefore be it resolved, or let it be resolved, or the IBCSD board of directors so ordains, and that phrase is the enacting clause. So okay. we just gotta choose one. The um, one aspect of this- I think ours should be so deal with it. <laughs> 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 so the um, uh, well another aspect of, of this is that um, we do this thing right now where we do our policies. So actually, this this relates to Ethan's earlier um, comments about um, like the the fact that well you know maybe because we didn't specifically state we were editing something, it's confusing to try to do it today. Um, well, um, Jeff Bard when in his public comment, the letter that he submitted, uh, I, I had spent some time talking to him but when, when he handed it to me days before the meeting about it, and one of his complaints was that he is used to seeing ordinances, not about policies, but ordinances, and ordinances at the Board of Supervisors have these like first reading, second reading process, and that he was like, why wasn't there a second reading? And, and my initial thing is, well, it's, it's a policy, um, not, not an ordinance, but um, then it's like, well, how do policies actually end up getting put into into place? And it turns out that, well, in some places, policies are ordinances. Uh, and in some places, policies are resolutions that are used in order to 
declare that a policy occurs. I spent some time talking to Pegeen uh, at the uh, Park District about this, and they use resolutions uh, to make policy modifications. They don't just kind of make a motion and let a policy modification occur. Um, but it is also my understanding, which might be wrong, that a resolution does not require a first and second reading. Um, the uh, only ordinances do. And so there's a question about like now or at some point in the future, maybe like not now, but like you know maybe six months from now, we should we should start doing first and second reading of policies once we have our more clear set of policies. We don't need to change them so often, or maybe we should. At now, start doing resolutions for those because that wouldn't change our process. It would just change. I mean, it wouldn't change our schedules. It would just change what we did, uh, and in order to make it more official that we did those, um, maybe we don't have to do any of that. But yeah, we are not doing what either the board of supervisors or even the park district does with relation to our policies. We are doing something much less formal than that, and maybe that's bad. I guess that's the too long didn't read it all that. <coughs> well, the Board of Supervisors' policies aren't ordinances, correct? I don't believe they are ordinances. Yeah, I don't think so either. So, if... But 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 I, I think if they make a modification to a policy, they're probably doing a resolution to do it. That's my... It's true. Yeah. Do, do resolutions require a second reading? I didn't think they did. I don't think they do. Okay. I'm not sure. Here's my question. With um, an acting clause, were you looking for something like a basis of authority? No, an acting clause is what I said it was. It's the thing at the end of the resolution that just says, therefore be it resolved for the IBCSD board directors so ordained. That's what an enacting clause is. So what do you want us to do with that here? Do you have, like, we, just have, we just have to specify one. I mean this is uh, this something that was consistent. derived from the Juruba CSD policy manual. Okay. They have a policy on this and I just figured I'd throw it in there as well. So it's also been uh, adopted into the uh, work plan as a something we could possibly make a policy on. If we did make a policy, it would probably just be um, the enacting clause for all uh, resolutions of the IBCSD board of directors is be it so ordained or something to that effect. It wouldn't be that extensive. Yeah, it's, it's only very explicitly in our agenda, I will just again point out, because we this was agendized under, let's agendize the work plan, and okay. the work plan had this thing, and then I didn't know what it meant, which is why it's in quotes, to make it seem really cool. really forced. But like, uh, I, I get what it is, no, I didn't put it before. That makes sense. Um, so, sir, is there any, any opinion on the, we are doing things that are much less formal than either the Board of Supervisors or even the Park District with relation to our policies? <coughs> I do think that comparing policies to ordinances of the Board of Supervisors is a little bit apples to oranges. Well, they don't do, uh, they, I think they just use resolutions for that. I, yeah, but, but, but I mean, but, the but, but, idea but that we're not do. doing a second reading in other yeah, places. Yeah, that's, that's, so there's, there's um, yeah, so I, I, I was making, I mean, Sorry, are there I, other I, districts that do? Yeah, so I just want to explain. Um, I was not, I, I provided, I, I think I mixed too many concepts up in, into the thing. So there's, there's just complaint that we did not yeah. have a first and second hearing. But yeah. then in researching that, I discovered that what we're currently doing is ludicrously less formal in a way than what the other people are doing. And maybe yeah. that's okay. But it is not, I'm not saying, hey, can we please do the first and second ordinance, first and second reading? Although I think it's something we should maybe think about, yeah. at least in the future. What I'm saying is, is that should we at least do a resolution? Like when we bring these back to the board or in our policies for it, maybe we fix that. You know, we can do that at the next policy committee meeting if you want to do it today. Maybe we should say that policies are constructed by resolution. That won't change our schedule. That won't force us to have a first and second reading. But that will put us in line with what the park district and the board of supervisors do. It, 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 would, it wouldn't even change the fact that we're currently doing them under the consent calendar, I don't think. It would just cause it, it would just, it would make more work for the secretary to have to make a more formal looking attachment and to assign probably a resolution number <laughs> to the resolution. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I was even thinking. <laughs> that's I think, the only thing that it really changes in our lives is your life gets harder. That's funny because I was just thinking, um, I don't want to make Jay's life harder by making him do the... <laughs> making them turn all the recommended policies into resolutions. <laughs> so everyone's just passing the buck on this one. 
Um, <laughs> um, you can force that back to me as long as, as long as long as I'll make a template I, I that doesn't require me to use Word, and then I'll and then it'll be a lot easier. I finally figured out how to duplicate rows in Word, so this agenda was much easier to put together. Like there was a point, I'm I'm serious. I started screaming on my computer while putting together this agenda. Wait, how, and, to, how to duplicate rows? How to duplicate a row? I finally figured it out. Like like just the tab key. <laughs> no, like how, that, that's crazy. Like like I wanted to like. Make an make an agenda item seven that is the same as agenda item six so that I could add extra agenda items. I um, couldn't figure out how to do that. There was like all sorts of I, um, I was screaming at my not, computer. Not I, I was like, <laughs> I was I was sick at the time too. I was just it was like couldn't take it anymore. Oh, I was no. like breaking down, and I finally figured out how to do it. it you had, instead of just selecting the whole box, you have to select the whole box plus a little bit extra. Interesting. <laughs> like if you yeah. select the whole box, tables, well, in, yeah. <laughs> tables in Word are. The bane of my existence, honestly. So I, I understand. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I don't I don't mind making them into resolutions, or you can do those, or whatever. But sh do. We... And I'm not even saying we have to do resolutions. I'm just pointing out. By the way, it turns out the park district uses resolutions. We don't. Is that okay? I, I think that it would. I mean, I don't really have a strong opinion on this, but given volume of policies that were recommended. Maybe we save that one till after we right. adopted something more comprehensive. I'm okay with that. I, I say we start drafting a, a policy actions and decisions. Okay, uh, one, one second. Uh, any public comment on the um, usage of things? Usage of motions or resolutions or ordinances for I'm interested in hearing about how it could still, I mean, I guess not hearing about but. Um, the fact that it could still be in the consent calendar, and so it wouldn't really create more work except for this template thing. I'm pretty certain a resolution can be in the same consent calendar. Mm -hmm. Or so, the supervisor does it all the time. Yeah, so we could still have a resolution in the consent calendar. Yeah. Um, That's why I said that. I don't know how comprehensive you guys want to get before you do that. Maybe that's something to consider. All right, so. Actions, decisions, policies, what do you got? Well, I see um, the Ivy RPD and Santa Ynez Community Services District have pretty similar, if not um, identical policies, um, coming from CSCA, of course. So the policy title is Board Actions and Decisions. And how it starts off is it says, actions by the Board of Directors include, but are not limited to, the following, and now this next section is bullet points of types of actions, the first of which adoption or rejection of regulations or policies, adoption or regulations, I mean, I'm sorry, adoption or rejection of a resolution, next, adoption or rejection of an ordinance, and there. They don't have a comma after the rejection part, but that's probably okay. Wait, they, they don't have a comma after rejection. But they do have a comma after adoption? No. Okay, all right. Oh, like, with removing both commas, I was like, but yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. All right. Um, approval or rejection of any contract or expenditure. Approval or rejection of any proposal which commits district funds or facilities, comma, including employment and dismissal of personnel, semicolon, and comma, next bullet point. Oh. <laughs> I see, okay, got it. Um, Approval or disapproval of matters. <laughs> disapproval. <laughs> <laughs> right? Of matters which require the district or its employees to take action and or provide services. Next bullet point. And here's where it gets into the quorum part. Okay. Action can only be taken by the vote of the majority of the board of directors, period. A majority of the current number 
of directors constitutes a quorum for the cur for the conduct of business. Period. For example, comma, if there are three seats filled, well, here it would here it would be if there are four seats filled and three vacant. I'm trying to people. make sense of what they have here. They a, quor a quorum would constitute three. A quorum would be four, but four. you'd at this point be able to. Oh, no, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. I'm, yeah, quorum would be. Here it says, three. for example, if there are three seats filled and two vacant, two votes are required to take action, and two directors constitute a quorum. I think they messed that policy up, actually. Wait, how many do they say required for quorum? It says, for example, yeah. if there are three seats filled okay. and two vacant, Two votes are required to take action, and two directors constitute a quorum. Oh, I agree with that. That's, that makes sense. Well, yeah, what's wrong yeah. with that? A quorum is a majority of the legislative body, and you can't, like, capacity thing you need a majority. But two votes is not a majority. No, yeah, two votes is a majority of the three seats that are filled. It's not, it's not oh, about... Oh, but in, in context of their previous policy, which says action can only be taken by... Oh... Well, yeah, no, I think wait, what, no, yeah, that's right. I, I think what, the, what their idea is is that um, it's not about seats filled at the front of the audience. It's about like, what if we um, have an, uh, we, we go with term f uh, ends and no one runs? Or like somebody leaves, like, you know, like, like, like somebody steps down and moves out of the district. And now we have fewer people on the board. They're saying that the quorum is based on the number of people serving oh, on oh, the board. I was thinking of that number of people. Yeah, not at the meeting, but yeah, the people oh. serving on the board. So if you're down to one person on the board, you can still take action. No, you can't. They're allowed to, they're not with one? Not with one. Okay. You still need to have a... This is what happened, this is what happened to Santa Rita Hills, and I thought that they were still sort of able to take action until they, they actually lost their final person, and then it was really bad. It was really bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Did they have a point? <laughs> I, I can tell you more of the story later. Okay. <laughs> yes. Very interesting. Okay, so that makes sense to me. Now they go on to have a few examples and I recommend if you want to really quick go to the Park District Policy Manual to just pull it okay, up. I have that. Oh. Uh, no. R shift. I want a working shift key. P D. Is this star. policy four one oh two? There. Five zero four oh. Okay. So bottom of page 88 and top of page 89. Or if you search 5040, you'll find it. But starting with the uh, end. But the interesting part is if you scroll down a bit, the part that we're considering right now, which is, so I explained that Five four five zero four zero point two, but now they list a series of examples which I haven't mentioned. I think we should copy and paste that uh, first example into one, but change it to four, four of seven. All right. You put the shift key. The wrong button. There. Okay. 
give you another example. If a vacancy exists on the board and a vote is taken to appoint an individual to fill said vacancy, three directors must vote in favor of the appointment for it to be approved. If two of the four directors present abstain, the appointment is not approved. Hmm. Vote is taken to appoint an individual to fill said vacancy. Three directors must vote in favor of the appointment for it to be approved. If two of the four directors present abstain, Oh, they were assuming that the other that there are four people present. That there's only one vacancy. Um, I think we probably could do without that one. I think it's well, we could do without any of the examples because the example I found this example actually just confused and undermined my understanding of the thing. Like I read it and I was like, now I don't understand it anymore. And then it turns out I read the example wrong, but I did still understand the, the actual policy. <laughs> I can fix this example to make me not confuse me. But. I am for the next one. Some actions of the board require two thirds majority vote and are specified by code statute. That's an example. It shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's but an example. I, I agree with its <laughs> inclusion and okay. in place in yeah. our policy. I'm just use the edit menu. Edit. Paste the match style. Okay. on 5040.31. A voice vote may be requested. So my understanding again of what the term voice vote means is it's when you do the thing where it's like all who say I, anyone nay, and that you normally like, that that was designed to be used when you have like an audience of 50 or 100 people and you're trying to do like Congress and you're like wanting to get a quick vote when you don't require a roll call. Um, the, uh, at a local level it works because Ethan can just look around and make it clear that like, oh yeah, it was just Jay or it was just George or it was just somebody who said no, like it works. So if two directors challenge the statement, a voice vote may be requested. And this is so... Why would you request a voice vote? It's saying, it's saying for things that you're not going to vote on because you have a consensus. Similar to how, like we've said, Jay, do you need us to, do you want a motion for, to place it on the policy committee agenda? Mm -hmm. or, or we're just oh, yeah. so the idea is, is that you could just say, does anyone disagree, seeing none, approving it? No, no, because no. it's talking about, like, I don't think it's talking about the formal actions mentioned above, but a board... What is a board directive then? I guess I don't know what that is. Well, I think it's poorly explained, but okay. <laughs> serving over there, I'm pretty sure it's uh, speaking with the general manager, like, yeah. all right, it seems like this is what we want to do. That um, was my initial Do you think thought. you can work on that? Or Yeah, you got it. Cool. That was my initial thought of what a directive meant too, but like, I'm just not sure. And it's saying shall state it for clarification, so like, it's, it's clear. We all understand this is how we're moving forward. Yeah, but if a directive meant just a motion that directs someone to do something, then that same procedure would be observed. So I'm just trying to make sure that we're clear that a directive is just me telling you that you don't need to make a motion for me to do something because I'll do it anyway. Uh, maybe we don't have to have this part of our policy. That's fine. At least at this point. I feel no particular need to have this. And then I don't think we need that last one either. Well, given not doing 3 1, I agree that we should. Not yeah. 3 2 to me feels like doubling down on that. I agree. So then should we go back to see what we've typed up? Do 
you want to go to the very top of it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Like, what am I doing? This is not useful to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not. I guess I should consider turning the television on its side at some point, trying to do a portrait monitor. Wait, how come? Hmm? Oh, I'm missing something. How come adoption or rejection of motions is supposed to? It, that's actually what I'm trying to figure out right now. They don't seem to just have motions, right? Like either you, like you either take a, make a resolution, or you have an ordinance, or these these random. Th Almost everything that we've done so far, it sounds like IVRPD will just do by, does anyone disagree? Let's do it. <laughs> right? Those are just board directives. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, the three ways that we're authorized to act under the law are uh, by motion, resolution, motion, resolution or ordinance. Yeah, so I'd love, actually, the first one, especially to be reflective of how it seems we're operating, is approval motion. or rejection of motions. Correct. I do not disagree. But now, what did you just take out there? I took out regulations or policies. I replaced it with motions. I think that's fine. That's what I thought you were asking me to do. No, I, I wasn't saying take it out. Oh, okay. I was saying just add this. But I think that the motion, that those policies are within a motion, a resolution, right, yeah. or an ordinance. Once yeah, but the, the procedure for how to approve the policy is something we've already outlined, <coughs> and you can do that through yeah. motion. Well, are we adopting the motion, or <coughs> I don't see a whole lot of difference in the language. The one I'm stuck I think on. Approving seems more grammatically correct. Yeah, but I think well, it's I'm a distinction without a difference. Yeah, do we adopt a motion or approve a motion? But like at that point, like I, I we also have this. Okay, before before I feel confident enough to make any comments about that, what is up with disapproval versus rejection? Like, so we're disapproving of a matter. Yeah. But we reject an ordinance. What is a matter? What? How do well, you approve or disapprove of a matter? A, is that not a motion at this point? Like we've now added motion. Disapproval. No, it's not a motion. What? What is a disapproval of a matter? How do we do that? How do we? How does a board disapprove of a matter? Well, I think I think this is back to similar to the policies or regulations, a matter is something that's within a motion, a resolution, or an ordinance. So I think what was going on before, before we did this change, is they were trying to list out all the different possible motions in a way. That like, well, a motion is going to either be an adoption or rejection of a re regulation or policy. A motion is an adoption or rejection of a resolution. We move to adopt a resolution. One possible motion is that we adopt an ordinance. One possible motion is that we disapprove of or approve of a matter whatever a matter might mean. That like, so like, all, like actions are always motions, and this lists out all the possible motions. So I think, if we, like, I almost feel like if we put motions under this, then suddenly the rest of this just becomes duplicative, because well, yeah. you need to do anything you want. Wait, no, you I know, I see what you're saying now. I wasn't looking at it. I, I see what you're saying too. before. So then perhaps is it good if we keep out motions? Well, it's either that, or we change the phrase actions to something else that's more broad and motions. No. No? No, I think <laughs> actions is good because this okay. is a, a policy for board actions and decisions. Board motions okay. and decisions. Well, I mean, we could just say that uh, actions by the board of directors in include the following and then have resolution, motion, and ordinances because those are the only things that are really well, but, ways but we can take action. And then not specifying policy what, what encapsulates. But how do we how do we take action on a resolution other than we somebody's going to move to adopt a resolution, like a, like adopting a resolution right. is, a, is a motion. You're right. So. So really, we could just say that all like the only board action is motion. But the reason that I would include the three of them is that 
in the law it states that the district can operate by a motion resolution or ordinance. So, so what did we I guess the more I look at this, the more confused I get about what the purpose of this policy is. Yeah. What if we were to state above um, the sentence preceding the bullet list, um, as provided by law, the board of directors may act by motion, resolution, or ordinance. And then actions by the board of directors include, but are not limited to, the following, adoption or rejection of regulations or policies, adoption of a resolution, as mentioned before, adoption or rejection of an ordinance, as mentioned above, approval or rejection, etc. Like if we were to have that introductory sentence, does that help at all? I, I mean, I, I suppose it makes it like it makes a little more sense, but I, I guess I still don't really understand the purpose of the policy. Right. Because at this point, once you get past ordinance, we're just describing possible things that you could make a motion, resolution, or ordinance about. And in fact, so we're, I, we're, we're not even limiting them. We're saying including, but not limited to, yeah. just like, you know. So I, yeah, I, I guess that, yeah, I'm just a little confused about the way the, basically the way the policy was written to begin with. I mean, we can change it to how we want to. And quick clarification, where was the policy, where did it come from? RPD. 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 And, RPD. Yeah. Um, so one thing that's not included is the adoption or rejection of a budget. Um, it's all kind of the same thing. It, I think the purpose of this section is just to give the directors some idea of what they could do in the future. It's like a nice menu of like, yeah. I don't even know how I'll go well ahead of this. Well, the policy s suggests that we could adopt a, or approve a contract. Okay, I like this idea. Let's approve a contract. I mean, it just expands upon what is already stated oh, implicitly or by the law. Kind of like <laughs> the rest That's of weird. the policy. It's annoying. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm okay with replacing, well, taking out all of, well, the bullet points that are specific to like examples of actions that can be taken and just having like if we want to keep them in there we can keep them in there it's just that they should be labeled as such because right now I just don't understand why you would include the three mechanisms for action in this like in the same uh, table as a like menu of things that could possibly be done Yeah, so one thing you can imagine is that that is doing this. And so now what we have is we say that we are allowed to act by motion, resolution, or ordinances. And then motion, no, because motion still can include, I take that back. At this time, I'm I mean, okay if we just say the still, law. We can still do that. We could say, we could say, as provided by law, board of directors may act by these three things. And then motions may be the following. It's like, because here's, here's what I think. So, the policy is for board actions and decisions. And we have a very legal, technical definition of what an action is. And then we're going to go on, and to me, the action is the mechanism by how we do things. Then we're going to go on to explain a bunch of other things, or a bunch of things that we could do by action. It, I'm just saying that it feels out of place and yeah. like unnecessary <laughs> on some level. Again, this is not something that I feel strongly about. We, we, so we could add a bullet point strong. that allows us to direct a director to start a party. That would be something we could add to our at, at this point, I'm advocating that we just put what the law says, which is the okay. board shall act Always only by laws. ordinance, resolution, or motion. Period. That's like the law, like, is that the sentence from the law? Yeah. Okay. So, what, I'm curious what, 
why do we think that the law bothers to specify this? Like, what else could we try to do? Like, just, what are they trying to stop us from doing, I guess, is the question. Like, I don't oh, know. like, if we're just agreeing on something that may be binding internal, like our general manager, for an example, might know to do something, but that doesn't mean anything for the public that we're serving. Okay, so there wasn't an act because we didn't make a motion for it. Right. Got it. All right. Well, so, like, if we trust our general manager, like, that they'll do that without motion, or if we trust our policy committee chair... That we're, that we're legally that not allowed to do that because we are only allowed to act by motion, not by eye contact with, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So does this mean that in the... So let's say we're, we're at board meeting, and at the board meeting, you know, as this happens all the time, like... Bob will. Let's see, I'm going to catch Spencer up. So Spencer, I, I'd ask the question like, what is the, what is this law trying to stop us from doing? Um, and that's the context of our conversation now. So I was like, what if we're like in the board meeting and Bob says, you know, we really should look at this policy, and I'm like, got it. I love putting stuff on policy committee. And then uh, is that like we're not allowed to do that because that was an action that occurred by thumbs up and snap, not by ordinance resolution or motion? No, no, no. You can I, still I do don't that. Think so actually, it, I, 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 mean, I think the thing that the law is specifically trying to do, and I'm gonna before I specifically say this, I'm gonna go look up the exact um, the exact okay, then statute. I'll, yeah, I'll go, fill in the meantime. It. I think um, when that type of situation arises, what ends up happening is. It's not making it, well, officially, it's not making it onto this committee's or a committee's agenda because of the comment by the other director, but because of the prerogative of, of the, the, chair. the chair. Yeah. So, so it's not an action so of the board. It's not an action of the board. Okay. It's just an action of the board chair as granted in our policy. Okay. It's like, um, yeah, you would. I think the one important distinction that this policy does create is the directive action. And so it essentially, it, uh, solidifies the, the thought process that determines that a directive is an action by the board, which is fairly important considering case law that determines uh, Brown Act violations. So I can't cite the case off the top of my head, but essentially what was found was that even though a person was directed by the board's consensus to go represent them on a, on a board, essentially that amounted to an action by the board to appoint that person as the representative. And so directives are actions. How but again, we, I'm not a lawyer. How would we make a directive that was not a motion or yeah, I'm, just like, I'm, still, just, I'm still trying I to figure out. Tell the person. Right. But does this go back oh, to, um, per law, the board of a single member of the board of directors cannot act on behalf of the board of directors? Is that the type of thing you're addressing? Not necessarily. So it's, it's more in the terms of like you guys talking to a general manager in the future or something to that extent, or perhaps even an intern. So just because you direct them to do something not by formal action of the board doesn't mean it won't be construed as a formal action. Okay, so I don't know if this is what you're getting at, but I'll read some government code. Cool, I love government code. <laughs> So this is from the Brown Act, and it's from section 54952.6. As used in this chapter, quote, action taken means a collective decision made by a majority of the members of a legislative body, a collective commitment or promise by a majority of the members of a legislative body to make a positive or a negative decision or an actual vote by a majority of the members of a legislative body when sitting as a body or entity upon a motion, proposal, resolution, order, or ordinance. So that, of course, would be distinct from, I don't know what the government code is, but it's at the very beginning, and it says the board of directors will only act by motion, motion resolution, or ordinance. So, so here we're actually allowed to vote upon a motion resolution, ordinance, order, or proposal. Yeah, and I don't You've know. You've got two extra ones. Yeah, and I don't know what the order or proposal is. <laughs> but I guess the crux of this issue to me is what the like what an action is. 
by the board. Mm -hmm. And of course, this isn't even the definition. This is the definition for this chapter. So there is no the definition for government code or that we operate under so far as I understand. It just means that the phrase action taken in this chapter means these things. Okay. A couple of questions. Um, the government code you referenced that states that you'll only act by a motion, resolution, or ordinance, where is that? Um, also pointing out that Probably that, six uh, one thousand. Yeah, that government code which G was referencing that has the extra two things is cities, counties, and uh, other agencies. So depending on where that one is, that could contradict the other and still not be. So involved. six one two two three is the board shall act only is that by ordinance, resolution, or motion. What or are the six one two two three? Do you know what I mean by that? It's oh. districts. Gotcha. Internal okay. organization of Com California Government Code Division Three Community Services District. Cool. Yeah. So you only have the three rather than the five. Those other two are available to cities. Yeah, because counties. the Brown Act doesn't just apply to special right. districts; it applies to. Yeah, Jay, you just said it. Yeah, I know. But I'm trying to figure out what document this is. Why is this only six one? Like, if I go to California Code sixty one one hundred, that one that one's easy to find. It will come up. And then I want to do six one. Two, if you two, just three. want to go like to a different one, go up, press the yeah. up button. Uh, no, I, I, can, I get up from the thing that I broke. Okay, okay. up from here. Six one two. It's in part ten, not chapter. Okay, so I'm gonna go up a little bit further. Get this zoom out. Okay, six one. Alternative revenues. Uh, six. Uh, so are you getting? Wait, no. No, there's a six one, two two. Okay, there we go. So are you getting this out of this document? That was where I found it, yes. So this isn't the current code. Okay. So this was under a section but also internal the, organization. I do explicitly remember that the exist. place where I originally learned this was um, the California government code provided to us by attorney Shane Stark. Not official advice, but in that copy. And Director Brown, that's where you got it as well, right? Mm -hmm. I've read it in multiple places. Okay, but you remember seeing it there. Internal organization for two. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Let's go district. I think board of directors. Have been. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, board of directors shall act only by ordinance from. So what is that? Six one. Six one oh four five. So with what we're seeing there, do we just want to replace it with that language for the section in consideration? I actually think that's how you wrote it out exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he did read it, and I did type it. So. Cool. Um, so, okay, good. I'm still interested in how y'all are going to be handling these directives. I think currently we're going to do one by motion. If we have a direction, a directive to a gentleman. Yeah, we don't do directives we don't have one unless one. there's a motion. Yeah. Cool. To me, the motion is what makes a directive a directive because it formalizes it. Well, so if, if, if I ask Jay to put an item on, if we're sitting at a board meeting and, I don't know, we, we, ask, we, ask the, we ask Ethan to do something as the president and we ask him, do you need a motion for this? And he says, no, I'm going to do it. Then we are essentially just trusting that he is going to do it. That's not a directive. If we say, hey, can you do this? And he says, yeah, sure. We haven't directed them to do anything. What makes it a directive is when we formalize it in motion. That's okay. m how I have been seeing it. But I'll also say the situation of you asking, hey, can you do that, has never happened really in context of the president. Anytime no, I've it, acted, I've always had it in motion. I agree. And 
the, I think the reason, I think it's a good <coughs> Usually when it's, hey, can you do that, it's to, it, it's usually regarding agendas from what I've seen. It's, hey, committee chair, can you put this on the agenda? Code is six one zero four five. Oh, we already found e. that. Oh, we, 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 yeah. We go back. To it. Oh, but we we should include the um, the things on quorum, just not the bullet points. Oh, got it. Saying. Got it. So yeah. That, To clarify, a majority of the current number of directors, you would say a majority of the current number of directors holding office, just so that it's clear that it's not speaking. I like that. And that's good. Is there anything else, or would you like a motion? Well, I'm reading it. So. Okay. And can you make those examples a little larger? And did we want this to cover committees as well, or did we want to outline committee committees in a different way? Oh yeah, I, I, I did. Well, yeah. 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 one, one, one thing about about yeah, I wanted to talk about committee quorum issues because there's not the obvious one, but like a like a weird one. It's not really, maybe it's not a quorum issue. Yeah, well, a committee cannot act by ordinance or resolution. No, cool. Right. I don't think None of our committees, because our committees are advisory in nature. Yeah, but a committee can act by motion. Right. Or is it not technically acting? Well, no, it can it's move. Acting. It's a legislative right. body. Right. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, I think with what we're doing here, and considering we got, this is inspired by the policies of other CSD board, I mean, other special district boards, I think right now we're, we're trying to get something for our board of directors. I agree. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable with what we have. For organization's sake, I want to add some, uh, just so, just some like A, B, C, one type of things, some labels. Okay. So what do you want to do? Okay. So um, next to the the board shall act only by residents, etc. Put A, section A. Uh, next thing B uh, for the example let's have that as part of B so if you just want to indent it or put a one next to it would you prefer a one or would you just prefer me to make it part of B I can do that I will go here and I will do bullets and I will say Where it works. 
works. As long as B is the second <laughs> one. This sort of works. Here, I should that. Oh, that one works. Wait, what? Okay. Conceptually, and then the last it. part is C. Oh, God, okay. <laughs> I was worried you were going to say that. <laughs> what else did you want to say? <laughs> with where I was going with this. <laughs> <clears throat> it worked. All right. Okay, cool. I have a motion. It's not right, though. Wait, what? Districts of. Can you just do tab, for example? If that's that works. Good. Okay. Cool. Cool. So I move. To recommend that the board of directors adopt the following policy entitled Board Actions and Decisions. A, or the board shall act only by ordinance, resolution, or motion. B, action can only be taken by the vote of the majority of the board of directors. The majority of the current number <coughs> of directors holding office constitutes a quorum for the conduct of business. For example, if there are four seats filled and three vacant, three votes are required to take action and three directors constitute a quorum. Example, if four of seven directors are present at a meeting, a quorum exists and business can be conducted. However, if one director abstains on a particular action and the other three cast I votes, no action is taken because the majority of the board did not vote in favor of the action. C. Some actions of the board require a two-third majority vote of the board and are specified by code, statute, and or district policy. Okay, can I put a slash here? And all falls second. Okay, and I want to amend my motion to be I move to recommend that the board of directors adopt the following policy entitled Board Actions and Decisions to read as follows. Friendly. Can I change these to be the spelled out letters, numbers, considering we, that's what we did in the example here? Yeah. have a policy on directives. Um, the reason the park district does is because essentially if you're doing things by consensus in that way, you need to have a way for people to dissent because they are actions. Our directives are all motions, so we don't we don't have a way of having a directive that is not a, not a motion. Eh. Um, the, uh, is there any other public comment on this motion? Seeing none, uh, I guess I'll ask any explicitly any more board comment. Uh, there is a, um, let's do a vote. Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay? Aye. Motion passes 3 0 at 8.58 p.m. Uh, no. There. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about under consider policies for actions? And decisions. Do we want to do it in an acting clause? Should be pretty simple. Oh. So this would essentially be a policy that states that the enacting clause of the district shall read as follows. Yes. Okay. Recommendation is OK Google. Is what? OK Google. OK. Yeah. Do you have any um, any yeah. example special district law? Yeah. Let me let me read. It. You want to type it? Special district. Um, so the title would be enacting clause ordinances. 
think uh, like ordinances. You said ordinances? And resolutions. And resolutions? Okay. Uh, and then the text is, the form of an enacting clause of all ordinances and resolutions passed by the board shall be colon, quote, be it ordained by the board of directors of the Isla Vista Community Services District as follows. Personally, I think that was kind of late. I do too. So, I kind of want to change it. United States, um, United States um, Congress, the Senate, and the House, for joint resolutions they use, resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, which we could do that, but I don't think we should. Uh, Venezuela, the National Assembly. I don't think we're taking anything from Venezuela. Coming okay. from a Venezuelan. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, I like this one. This is uh, the UK. Uh, it's be it enacted by the Queen, the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm British too. Those are the only two things I have. <laughs> <laughs> bring this up. Um, most excellent. <laughs> Wow, there's a really long enacting clause for Thailand, so we're not going to use that one. How about North Korea? What do we got for North Korea, right? Oh, uh, I don't think we're going to do this. No, I don't think we're going to do this. I don't think we should discuss it. Now, as far as um, the park district, it looks like what they have is now, therefore, it is determined and ordered as follows. And that's what that's what comes right after the whereas is. And that's your understanding of where we would place this enacting clause? Yeah. yeah. The California state legislature says, does it, the, the people of the state of California do enact as follows. If we wanted to become self-important, we could put the people of Isla Vista do enact as follows. Uh, I don't like that. I don't think we could, though. Because it's not. You're right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now that I think about it. I love where you're going with this, but um, I mean, in terms of simple ones, I favor now therefore let it be resolved. Or now therefore be it resolved. Isn't that specific for resolutions though? Maybe. I'm fine with now, therefore, be it ordained. I like determined in order better. If we wanted to change it to now, therefore, be it determined and ordered. Now, therefore, I like, be it. I like, I like this one better. How it's written? I also like how it is written instead of saying be it. Yeah, I'd like because how it's I written don't. too. And as far as the actual clause, like what's in bold, is it doesn't have the as follows part. So we could probably take that off the tail. Wait, wait. I'm confused. In is this document I'm looking at, which is a resolution, in yeah. bold it says, now therefore, comma, it is determined and ordered. And right next to that, in plain text, Ooh. as follows, colon. So I think as far as our enacting clause, it's just now, therefore, it is determined and ordered. Okay. Instead of it is, can we do be it? I'm preferring it is, Ethan. Right now I like how, how it's written there, but um oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Let me count our votes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
be it enacted by the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty by and with the advice and consent of the National Assembly of St. Christopher and Neves. Um, Gabe, if you want an uh, agenda, there's one on the window. Cool, thanks. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with this. I'd be happy to make it. Okay. All right. Uh, I move that the Board of Directors approve, or I'm sorry, you recommend withdraw, withdraw, yeah, I know. Uh, I move to recommend that the Board of Directors adopt the following policy entitled Enacting Clause of Ordinances and Resolutions to read as follows. The form of an enacting clause of all ordinances and resolutions passed by the Board shall be, quote, now, Comma, therefore, comma, it is ordained, oh, it is determined and ordered. I don't know why I said ordained. Second, uh, not including that last part of it. Is. Yeah. That last part wasn't part of the motion. Yeah, right? I'd like to okay. amend where I said ordained to just say determined. Um, for the purpose of our loyal listeners, do you want to clarify what that sen second sentence uh, does? Yeah, the enacting clause as stated should read, quote, now, comma, therefore, comma, it is determined and ordered. Okay, friendly amendment with the second. Okay, public comment? That's wrong. That, that only works for ordinances. It's ordered. Okay. It would have to be determined and resolved for resolutions. We can't order a resolution? No, because that's an ordinance. We can order an ordinance? Oh, I guess an order. I, I never even occurred to me that the word ordinance comes from the same roots as the word order. I had not even noticed that. Should it be, should we incorporate? Can you say no, therefore it's determined. No. <laughs> no? Okay. I think if we want to. And enacted. I'm fine with that. It is an enacting clause after all. And enact is specific to action, and there's three ways in which we take action. And I love that. <laughs> hey, all right. So all right. it's friendly with the second, that friendly we, with the first, okay. change it to enacted. So it's now, therefore, it is determined and enacted. Okay. Awesome. Unless we want to throw something in there about the Queen's most excellent uh, magic. <laughs> <laughs> However, you're writing I, our, uh, our vote before we take it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nice we one. can't just do an informal directive here. <laughs> you know, I was, I was about to do the roll call vote, but I was like already typing like the things. I was just like, there were parallel That's processes funny. in my mind. So, Ethan. Did we get... That was the public comment. I yeah. yeah. We just did have a comment. Yeah. Okay. Aye. Spencer? Aye. J. Aye. Motion passes 3-0 at 9-0-8 p.m. I just want to formally express how happy I am that Wikipedia has an article called Rules of an Action Closet. <laughs> because it's so helpful. <laughs> it just makes me happy to know that there are people who are wonky enough <coughs> to put that together. Is there anything else you want to do on consider policies for actions and decisions? No. Okay. Take it. Consider clarifications and modifications to our conflict of interest policies. No, policy. At the last board meeting, George wanted us to verify that our conflict of interest policy is not in any way wider than the law. At this time, we will try to verify this and consider any needed changes. We will also consider moving positions we do not directly hire, as requested by Bob, as well as consider any other changes that may be realized as we further analyze and compare with the law. Okay. I do not feel particularly competent to actually be able to do this. Like, this is essentially a request that I would be like, Hey, lawyer, can you compare the thing that we wrote and compare the thing that, that's there and verify that they're not different? If we really want to just say that they're the same, I feel like we should just refer. If we want to write something that we feel is possibly wider than the law but is no narrower than the law, I feel like we can sort of do that, which is what we sort of tried to do. We don't think it's wider than the law, but maybe it is. But I'm, I'm more concerned that it would that it is not narrower. I'm just saying, like, I don't really feel yeah, like... No, I understand. Yeah. I agree with you that I think this... Well, I'll just say, I think the substance of what we came up with, and it wasn't even us who came up with much, most of this, yeah. we approved it, but it came from uh, Goleta Water. I think the substance is good, and I do not feel that it imposes any 
unnecessary burdens that are not called for in the law, in my very amateur interpretation. That being said, the things that I think we can improve are Bob's suggestion yeah, that we Bob's not saying. designate positions that don't exist, which I think is fair. Um, and so, I don't know if you have the policy. I do. Um, it it is makes you get the current ones. Yeah, yeah. It's um. Because I brought something to the board that didn't end up getting adopted, if I remember correctly, last week. I just got punted back here. Okay, so this was from when did we when did, when did we uh, enact it? Do you remember? It was not the last week. We didn't we didn't change it at the last week, or did we change the last week? At our last meeting of the policy committee. Last meeting policy. No, I mean, but we we don't we don't enact things. At the board, though, they 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 consented to it at the last meeting of the. We so if we changed it to what? The the current version of the no, policy. No, this was never approved. The, comp the conflict of interest policy was it was brought though to the previous board, right? It was brought, but not okay. Approved. And that was the five sixteen meeting problem. Yeah. Okay. So I've got all I've got all the board packets. So and real quick, I'll mention that I spoke with the FPPC last week on things related to conflict of interest codes, and um, the person directed me to um, a great resource, um, conflict of interest code presentation for local agencies, focused on adopting an amended conflict of interest codes. They have a webinar, but then also a PowerPoint s slide printed onto pages, which is what I use. And one of the slides, which I actually <coughs> was surprised by it, um, the content of it, it says pitfalls to avoid. And there's four bullet points, um, which go, one, do not give full disclosure to positions with limited decision-making authority. Two, do not cite Form 700 schedules as your disclosure categories. Three, do not include provisions that go beyond the scope of the Political Reform Act. And four, do not include the gift limit or due dates. Um, that last part is because those are subject to change, um, but the two that surprised me were do not include provisions that go beyond the scope of the Reform Act. I'm just saying, don't, tr don't overdo it, just do what's exactly what's being asked and no more, um, which I think is interesting. Yeah. Um, and then the first pitfall it says to avoid is do not give full disclosures positions with limited decision-making authority. What the law does call for is that when we don't have a conflict of interest code in place, we have to do that, which is what we did with, um, with the interns. And I'm just speaking on this in, in terms of mm -hmm. amending this policy, yeah. but just for, as an example, we didn't have a conflict of interest code in place. So um, we required new positions that we designated as consultants to to fully disclose, but it's saying that with the positions that we do identify, we should only have them disclosing positions uh, that, or only disclosing uh, categories that are, are relevant to their position. Okay. So anyway, some things for us to keep in mind when we look through this. Let's make sure um, that we don't include the gift limit. Um, the part that's kind of hard for us to determine is whether or not we go beyond the scope of the Political mm -hmm. Reform Act. But let's also make sure that we don't cite Form 700 schedules mm -hmm. as disclosure categories. I'm okay. not sure if we do or don't. I don't think we do. We definitely don't cite them by reference. Okay. <coughs> now, um, <coughs> um, I will say if we want to scroll to the top, I would change that I want to see if we made, or make sure that we made, all the way up. Um, okay, right here. Um, so right now where it says the secretary acting as the filing officer, I'd like to change that. Um, that the one that you did. Yeah, because I don't have the, hang on a second, I'm just going to, oh, this is the horrible one. Um, what we did for this last time, I'm just going to do that again. for the recording what you're doing? What I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going to Google Drive. I am going to everything that has ever been shared with me. I am pulling up 
the um, uh, the financial disclosure policy that was shared with me last time. I am once I am there, I am going to file, make a copy. I am constructing a new financial disclosure policy shared with the exact same people as the previous one. And now that I have this new financial disclosure policy, we can edit it with formatting. Okay. So if you want to zoom in on the paragraph called Statement of Economic Interest. Yeah. Okay. Um, so right now it says, upon receipt of the statements filed by persons holding designated positions as defined here and after, the secretary acting as the filing officer shall forward a copy of each such statement to the Santa Barbara Clerk Recorder. So I wanted to read the secretary comma, acting as the filing official, comma, shall forward a copy of each such statement to the Santa Barbara Clerk Recorder, who shall be designated as the filing officer. So this is at the suggestion Should of... Should the filing official be capitalized then? Acting as the like, like so we we have both a filing official it, and a filing officer, and these are both like official things, like they're like like cats. I mean, the board has not taken action to they will make a, the filing official a position. That's why I, the phrase says acting as the filing official. But but has the board directed you to act as the filing official? They have directed me to act as the filing officer. So the distinction is in. It's, it's in a couple different things. So apparently there are some things, and this is after a conversation I had with Sheila has at Clerk Reporter's office, but there are some things that the technical filing officer does that are above and beyond just keeping copies of these statements of interest that otherwise, if I was the filing officer, what I, what I, I would be doing. She encouraged me to use language like this in the policy, and that she said other special districts have it like this, so that they aren't doing unnecessary work that the clerk reporter's office already provides. And one of the <coughs> specific reasons, the specific services that we would gain access to is the electronic filing system that the clerk reporter's office has in place. I'm fine with this as long as on the next agenda of the Board of Directors there's something to clarify your role. Unless, because it hasn't been clarified yet, right? Um, well, I think it's clarified in, in this policy amendment. No, because you've been directed by the Board of Directors to do something. Which I remember before, I kind of had the same understanding of Sheila Hess that a board member shouldn't be filing an officer. So I think I think this is well, great. Well, now Sheila Hess is the filing officer. Great. So I think it'll be important to clarify that for the board. Um, okay. But I like what you're doing here. Okay. We will speak about it when we bring the policy up. Um, the other thing is that I think we should nix B through E of designated positions, given that those are not things that currently exist, and Bob's suggestion about. Specifically, the secretary is right now just a director, and should because so here's the other thing, and the thing he specifically mentioned is that if we have all the des these designated positions, then when Sheila or whoever it is at clerk reporter is filing her statements, she's going to be confused at why she has two of the same statements for separate positions. And I'll just say we that should probably read over it a third time because if the board does approve this recommendation that we make, then that is going to be forwarded over to the uh, clerk recorder's office and it will actually go before the board of supervisors um, to for approval 
I imagine it would be probably not an agenda. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is no more amendments after we do this. Or let's at least try not to do any other amendments because there's no going back. Or at least it's a process to go back and revise. Mm -hmm. And my thought is for, because we had general manager before, initially I was inclined for us to keep general manager after directors since we are required to get a general manager as a, as a community services district, but I also do understand that until we do it, it could be. I did not, so I didn't understand the reason why we're removing general manager. I understand maybe why we're removing secretary, but I don't actually don't understand why, why, why Bob requested that we remove general manager. Well, so he requested that we remove, we remove attorney because we don't have an attorney. He requested that we remove treasurer because the treasurer isn't someone who. I mean, the treasurer made a lot of sense to me, yeah. 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 Um, and attorney also made sense to me. Oh, I, I remember, I remember now. It was, there was the, both the attorney and the general manager were things that we might be contracting out to. And because we might be contracting out for them, they are very different than if we actually brought them in as employees. That's right, and we wouldn't want to designate them as positions. Right. That was, that was because if it was just, was just a matter of like, we don't have it yet, I was going to be like, can we just leave it in because next week we might add it back. Yeah. Like, I'm just yeah. like, no, oh, I, but no, I was starting to think the same thing too. I'm yeah, but, but, yeah but it was because they were contractors, not employees, potentially. Well, Although I think we're not sure about anything yet, but that's, but that's something they're working on. So. I think it's actually important, though, to keep at least the general manager in because if you are contracting out, I remember last week I was looking a lot at the form 805, 805. which for that it says uh, as one of the qualifiers for which consultants have to file a conflict of interest code, a con conflict of interest disclosure yeah. is if they're serving in the staff capacity which performs essentially the same duties as a staff position listed in the conflict of interest code. Yeah, okay. That, and it's and it still something that is not even clear yet whether we theoretically can have a contractor be a general manager. Like that might just be. Oh, I, I think that is something. LATCO, LATCO has an independent contractor as their general manager. Oh. Yeah. You I, know I, I, don't, I don't want to speak for yeah. the committee that I'm on, but yeah. I've certainly come up across a lot of examples. I, I, I only made the comment that I did because I have watched a lot of meetings of the committee that's looking at it, but now it's interesting. Okay. Um, I could give you more where that came from. Yeah. No, we won't speak. I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not. I, I was just. So I only brought it up because it had been brought up before the other thing, and now we've got. That's really cool. So is so is there confusion if we leave general manager as a designated position, and we end up in the future having an independent contracted general manager? Would there be confusion? Would, would this further complicate any sort of question as to whether or not the general manager was an independent contractor or an employee? Because if, the, if we think that the answer to that is yes, then I'm inclined to say leave out general manager, especially given that we have not filled that position. Well, I, um, I don't think that will lead to confusion. But again, I'll, I pulled up the the definition I was looking at and the two-part test for who is a consultant per the Attorney General's uh, thoughts on the this part of the Political Reform Act is, is a per consultant means an individual who pursuant to a contract with a state or local government agency A makes governmental decisions whether to and then it goes through different types of government decisions or B serves in a staff capacity with the agency and in that capacity participates in making governmental decision as defined in Regulation 18702.2 or performs the same or substantially all the same duties for the agency that would otherwise be performed by an individual holding a position specified in the agency's conflict of interest code. So Wait, we're, we're having two separate conversations then because Consultants would not be specified as a designated position. Right, but consultants who were contracting for the general manager would be uh, contracting to <coughs> perform the same or substantially all the same duties. That's correct. For the, the agency, the that board would. of directors would need to so designate them as filing positions pursuant to this conflict of interest policy. Right, based on the fact that we would have general manager. 
in here, which would be... No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Okay. Consultants are not designated positions at the district. Right. Because they are consultants and because that is the nature. I'm not asking for consultants to be designated positions. What I'm asking is, I mean, the reason a consultant files is because, well, one of the reasons is because they're performing the same or substantially all the same duties for the agency that is the same as the thing that's being listed. I guess, I guess what I'm just saying is that, especially given that we haven't taken action to do anything regarding the general manager, it would seem, it would seem weird to me. I mean, if you want to leave it in, if you, I don't know why I feel it, it's just, it seems unnecessary. So, uh, yeah, okay. two points. Um, yeah, it's unnecessary, but that's only because you're like, essentially, uh, summarizing the law anyway, and so it's always going to be unnecessary. Um, and two, I would recommend that you leave attorney if you're leaving general manager. Okay, so now here we get to the crux of another issue, which is that these positions are these these positions have disclosure categories, and that's the reason that we have disclosure categories. So we can take designated positions and other positions that are um, later determined by the board and say, these are the things that you need to disclose because these are the things that are relevant to the duties that you are performing. So this is the reason why, whether or not someone is an independent contractor or is a position at the district would be relevant in my opinion. And maybe we should go look at other agencies, conflict of interest forms, a, a, or uh, conflict of interest codes, agencies that have um, independently contracted legal services. GM's a little hard to find, but we can still find it. Oh, shoot. And I mean, in principle, I don't really have an issue with saying the GM, whether they're an independent contractor or they are a position at the district, needs to do full disclosure. I don't have an issue with that at all. I think that in the case of the attorney, it might be, well, I would just want to see what other districts are doing so we keep it consistent with that. Totally. And as far as I see, we're not required by law to have an attorney, but we are required by law to appoint a general manager. Um, so I'm still in favor of leaving it in. And just to make sure that we're on the same page with what I'm saying is that um, like the two-part test for whether or not a consultant would file is includes um, if they're performing the same or sam substantially all the same duties for the agency that would otherwise be performed by an individual holding a position specified in the agency's conflict of interest code. So if there was a consultant hired to perform duties that are the same or substantially similar to that of a general manager, which we have reference here, then per this code, they would have to be designated. Um, well, but the, the two separate issues in regards to that are whether or not calling a something that is a consultant or something that is an independent contractor, calling that a designated position. Not calling it that, let me clarify that. But you are, by asking to put it in there. No, 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 <coughs> I'm not asking to put it in there. I'm just asking to put this in there. And if it was an independent contractor, they would file, we would, the district would file a Form 805 for consultants. And the reason that we would be filing, the district would be filing an 805 for consultants is because a particular consultant is 
performing a duty that's similar to a position that we reference in our code. Not adding consultant to designated positions at all. Not proposing. I'm not asking. I'm, I'm not saying that that's what you're asking to do. I'm saying that if we have an independent contractor who is fulfilling the duties of the general manager, then it stands to reason that by calling that position a designated position, people would then come to us and say, "This is actually an employee and not a." independent contractor. I don't think so. Do you see what I'm saying? No. I think if we go to the Attorney General's memo and look at page two, it's really, two and three, it's really clear. Okay. The other thing that we're saying by this, and I just, like I said, I'm fine with this, but we're saying we are requiring a general manager, no matter what, legally, technically speaking, that person is they are an employee or a independent contractor, they need to do full disclosure. Yes, and that's actually something that I'm very comfortable with. Okay. Um, after I'm, just, I'm just making sure I want no, to that's a great, that's because a great the answer question. would your answer be possibly different for secretary, treasurer, or attorney? I wouldn't know what to, what to say. Know, for okay, us. that's fine. I'm just saying that it's relevant for us to make sure that that's out there. Executive staff, it's standard for someone who is an executive staff member or performing duties substantially similar to an executive staff member to report full interest. Okay. Dave. Okay. okay. You had your hand up. So, so I'm, I, your conclusion was to. I mean, it, it's fine. Sheila Hess is just going to be confused, but. If oh, we well. Leave them in. Uh, oh, to eliminate E through C. So you would like to eliminate E through C, and we're just going to make her confused. Well, here, here's, I'm, I'm here's another way that we could look at this. If okay. we don't put it in now, do we want to send this before the Board of Supervisors twice in the right. short and that was, time? That's the thing. That I think that's worse too. than giving a phone call to county elections to let them know. I so Great. Awesome. Great more discussion. <laughs> Take out E through C. Vote. Right? Yeah, because the... For something, you know, hopefully, once we get a general manager, there's always going to be a general manager barring short vacancies. And it will always be relevant for that person to disclose. For the other things, the board can just designate them. What These was are the two oh, most got essential it. things okay. to All the right. operations of the district, or the directors and the general well, Because we can have the board designate them. And so the, the thing about calling elections was because we designate them at the board and then call. Why are we calling elections? Uh, just what? letting them know to avoid confusion. To avoid you know when we when what happens. Oh, well, if we adopt the, this, the hey, just so you know, um, you don't we don't have a general manager right now, so, so that's don't why you think don't have, have a missing form. form that's so why you don't. Okay, have so that's that's, that's that. okay. That was about yeah. not removing Jen. Got it. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure why y'all removed the attorney though. My reasoning for that is an attorney is not required by law to have. You're not required by law to have an attorney as a district, but the attorney is required by law to be designated. Which is why we can designate them as a board of directors. Okay. But, but we, can general do that for general. we can do that for general manager, but general manager we're required to appoint by law. Oh. So it makes sense to have it in our policy. So are we just like out of law right now? That's what you're saying? Like like right now we're- No, because we don't have- No, we have a vacancy. Right we have a vacant position and we're vacant moving towards. Well, but we can't discuss that in this yeah, committee okay. at and all. It's, it's, trying, it's trying to verify that it's that we have the position now, that's why we're disclosing it here on the we, list. We, we, we're, you're saying that we it's, it's, always it been, it's always been a position. It's always been a position, it's vacant. The same way that president and vice president, cool. president right. have always been a position. All right, got it. Now what? Um, one more thing that I'll mention from this, uh, this document I'm looking at. The three components of a code are one, terms of the code, in parentheses, incorporation of regulation 18730, which that's how we begin in the mm -hmm. purpose section. Cool. 
um, check. after that. And I guess the statement of economic interest part that, does that cite the code at all? No, I guess that's something extra. Um, it says two list of designated positions, check, check. which we have there, and then three disclosure categories, which we have. Check, check. After that, we have a, an additional positions part, which that's more of an internal it's policy. Just a way of defaulting the disclosure category for positions that we don't have. How to make new ones. Wait, I thought we had a default. What? I thought we had a thing that said that if we had positions that were not on here, they would default in some way. Am I misremembering that? Well, there is something that says, right before the disclosure categories begin, it says, each of the above persons must make a statement of economic interest for each of the categories of yeah, disclosure. No, I, I, I'm just missing okay, keep going. So essentially, that, uh, there's a default for no, the designated yeah. positions, but not for the additional positions. Now, that's why, that's why I'm thinking, thank you for, yeah, that, that's, that's the discussion of Russ having. Because okay. the board of directors shall determine the required disclosure categories at the time of designation for additional positions. Wait, All right. Now, here's my thing. When additional positions may be designated by the board of directors, when that additional position is designated, is it supposed to be added to this document? <coughs> yes, it is, which means that we should probably change that first line that I read, which said, um, each of the above persons must make a statement of economic interest for each of the categories of disclosure listed, listed here and after. Or just say that- Wait, why would we change it? Because there could theoretically be a situation where the board could designate a position to not have to do full disclosure, but then this would be saying you do have to no. have a statement that's full disclosure. Well, then if we do change that language, we are going to need to list above w or somewhere which categories those are responsible for reporting. So I am pretty comfortable with how you have it right now. So you want to change the bottom then? Let me look a little further. When we go to appoint a new position, we'll have to adopt an amendment to the policy anyway, apparently, in order to add the item to the list, at which point we can also fix this. Can you... Um, but right now it's fine. Where did you say you took this from? Uh, Goleta West, or Goleta Water. Like the, like the. And this here and after part, I'm reasonably confident this is something that I just wrote when I was editing it. I so think we should take it out then. And yeah, I think what they did, if I remember correctly, is they actually had next to the position something like one through five. I mean, I'd be fine with doing that too. I, I'm actually I'm in more in favor of that, and then taking out yeah. this right. part right here. Doesn't matter whether we do it now or later. Okay. We then have to modify the sentence around here to indicate so persons occupying the following designated positions must file statements of economic interest on forms provided by the PPC. And make those disclosures consistent with must, must file student economic interests and forms provided by the UC for the specified disclosure categories listed here, after the position here. name. categories begin? Yeah. If you want to go look at those. Okay. So I changed it to read, each of the above persons must make a statement of economic interest for each of the categories of disclosure. Wait, did you, you type say that? It again? Did you already type that, Spencer? Yeah. Yeah. He, Spencer typed that. He Are we on the same no. dot? No, right. we're not. I purposely didn't want to edit the one that you're editing. Oh, got it. So I made it. a new one. 
and I shared it with good, all the same good, people. Good choice. Okay. But now he's editing that okay. one, so we um, the whole purpose. Each of the above persons must make a statement of economic interest for each of the categories of disclosure that the physician has been designated to disclose. Categories of disclosure are listed here and after. I still, I still fail here. Each of the categories of disclosure for... I'm still missing something. Um, each of the, uh, oh, that the position has been designated to disclose. Okay. Okay, and then what I did is I went up here and I added persons. I, oh yeah, I saw what you added. That was good. All right. <coughs> It is shared with you, so you should be able to see it if you go here. It says shared with two people. Ethan and Spencer. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I think I uploaded a different one. New financial disclosure policy. Yeah, that's it. That says logged in, all right. Um, is that the right way we want to set the right verb? Must make a statement of economic interests? Each of the above positions must make a statement of economic interests for each of the dis categories of disclosure set forth here and after. File? I like file there. Agree. Yeah. Um, can I move this so that we can then make amendments after? So this should, this should also say file? Uh, no. No, no. disclosures. This is file a statement of disclosures. Yeah. I'll agree with that. Okay. Um, I have a motion. All right, you can read the whole thing again like we did yeah. last time. Um, I right, move I can't to recommend time, no. that the board of directors amend the following policy. No, we don't have the. No, wait, amend the following policy. You just didn't amend the policy. We don't, wait, there's nothing to amend because this has never been approved. No, we have a policy called. Call <coughs> call <coughs> right, and it's a it's a yeah, let's not policy. amend the following policy that we're just amend the policy entitled. Okay. Right. Um, I have some motion. I move to recommend that the Board of Directors amend the policy entitled Conflict of Interest to read as follows. Purpose. The Political Reform Act, California Government Code, Section 81000 at C, requires state and local government agencies to adopt and promulgate conflict of interest codes. The Fair Political Practices Commission, FPPC, has adopted California Code of Regulations, Section 18730, which contains the terms of a standard conflict of interest code, section 18730, together with an amendment here and after adopted by the FPPC, is hereby incorporated by reference. Statement of Economic Interest. District directors and designated employees, contractors, and officers shall file amendments of economic interest with the Isle of Community Services District upon the forms provided by the FPPC in accordance with the regulations herein referred to. Designated employees, contractors, and officers are those who make or participate in the making of decisions which may foreseeably have a material effect on economic interests. Upon receipt of the statements filed by persons holding designated positions as defined here and after, the secretary, acting as the filing official, shall forward a copy of each such statement to the Santa Barbara clerk reporter, who shall be designated as the filing officer. Designated positions. Persons occupying the following designated positions must file statement of economic interest on forms provided by the FPPC for the specified disclosure categories lifted, listed after the position name and make those disclosures consistent with California Code of Regulations Section 18730 et A. Directors. Categories 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. E, general manager, categories one, two, three, four, and five. Each of the above positions must file a statement of economic interest for each of the categories of disclosure set forth here and after. The board may require different levels of disclosure for consultants and other persons employed by the district. Categories of disclosure. For the purposes of listing the categories of disclosure, the following terms shall have the meanings set forth here and after. Business entity means a commercial for-profit entity. Business position means a position with a business entity. 
the threshold for reporting is an interest with fair market value of $2,000 or more, or such different amount as the FPPC regulations shall specify. Business income means income from a business entity in excess of $500 annually, other than income which is exempt <coughs> from being reported pursuant to FPPC regulations. Each of the above persons must make a statement of economic interest for each of the categories of disclosure that the position has been designated to disclose. Categories of disclosure are listed here and after. Category 1. Interest in real property that are located within the boundaries of the district, including any leasehold, beneficial or ownership interest or option to acquire such interest in real property. Category 2. Business positions or investments in or income from persons or business entities engaged in appraisal, acquisition, or disposal of real property within the boundaries of the district. Category 3. Business positions or investments in business entities and income from any sources if the business entities or sources of income provide services, supplies, materials, machinery, or equipment to or for the use of the district. Category 4. Business positions or investments in business entities and income from any sources if the business entities or sources of income are subject to the regulation or supervision of the district, including but not limited to the issuance or granting of franchises or permits or land use control or regulation. Category 5. Business positions or investments in business entities and income from any sources if a. The business entities or sources of income have filed a claim or have a claim pending against the district. b. The designated employee's duties involve the handling or processing of such a claim. Additional positions. Additional positions may be designated by the board of directors by motion, resolution, or ordinance when it has been determined that persons in these additional positions make or participate in the making of decisions which may foreseeably have a material effect on economic interests. The Board of Directors shall determine the required disclosure categories at the time of designation. Conflict of interest, semicolon, governmental decisions. No district director or person holding a designated position shall make, participate in making, or in any way use or attempt to use their posi official position to influence a governmental decision in which they know or have reason to know they have a disqualifying conflict of interest. A public official has a conflict of interest if the decision will have a reasonably foreseeable material financial effect on one or more of their economic interests, unless the public official can establish either one, that the effect is indistinguishable from the effect on the public generally, or two, a public official's participation is legally required. Determination of conflict of interest, governmental decisions. For the aforementioned sections, a determination of whether a conflict of interest exists shall be made through an analysis of the facts and circumstances in accordance with the provisions of California Code of Resolution Regulations, section 18700 through 187909. So then Together with any amendments here and after adopted. Conflict of interest, semicolon contracts. District directors, officers, and employees shall comply with California Government Code section 1090 Etsy. Employees and consultants. No employee or consultant of the district shall make, participate in making, or in any way use or attempt to use their official position to influence a governmental decision in which they know or have reason to know that they have a disqualifying conflict of interest. Second. I'd like to amend my motion to take out that wild nine. Um, there is a... Did I mess something else up too? There's a few you, you changed something else, but you changed it and it was better, so I just changed it. Um, but this one here, section 18730, together with... Do you have any amendments? Is that what That's probably what it meant. So, we change that? Yes. Can we with you, Ethan? You can have other notes. You are taking notes. Yeah. Um, there was one thing at the top. Um, with 
with any amendments. That was when we just that's what you just yeah, said. I, I saw you all. Sorry, I can't read my hand. <laughs> um, and then there was one person or one place that said um, each of the above persons must make a statement of an economic interest. So I was wondering if that should be f right there. Should that be filed? I I think filed there, but that's what. So here's my one thing, which is that we talk about um, making, and we kind of touched on this before, but so we have these additional positions, and the way that they are designated is by motion, resolution, or ordinance, but doing so would amount to an amendment of a policy. So Maybe you should say by amending this policy. Do you... So, I mean, we, I know we spoke about this at least at some length the last time that we talked about this policy, and I guess we all just didn't realize that. Well, I did not understand that you were intending that when the new position occurred, that it would appear in the policy manual in the list. I thought it was just going to be you know, like. I think we all didn't understand it now that I think about it. But I still sense. don't think it's supposed to be in here, because I'm pretty oh. sure the purpose of the Form 805 is, since this is a position not designated in your conflict of interest code, we're going to have it listed here so that you have it designated for your district. That's what okay. Right. If that makes sense. Okay. It makes yeah. sense to me, but as much sense makes as my non-legal understanding of this makes sense. So. But, yeah, well, let's all take a look at the forms um, and just come prepared to the next board meeting. And you look at 804 because that actually creates positions rather than. <coughs> My opinion is that the is that the forum does not provide an opinion on this particular question. I think we should all look into this more. I agree. Um, and if we find something new, we'll, we can bring that up at the board level. All I right. think given the knowledge we have, we... Oh, I found it. Wait, 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 wait. Very bottom left, continuing up right. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh. All wait, right. Is that 804 or 805? 804. Okay. But that's not... 805 does so not much say that, discussing. and I can understand why 805 would not say that in 805, 804 would. Right. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, so should we amend the motion to... Oh, whoa, hold on. 805 doesn't actually use the word positions. So when this we goes back to what I was talking about before, right there. Yeah. So it sounds like additional positions, maybe designated by the board of directors, would cause an eight hundred four and should be made, possibly by uh, modifying our policy. Fair enough. Yeah. That is fair. So. So what we're missing is the consultant part. Yeah. So we actually. But the reason that a consultant discloses is because they do something that's substantially similar to one of the positions that's listed in your policy that was created by a Form 804 or by a motion or ordinance. So that's mm -hmm. not necessarily true. Yeah. Because if you have, you could certainly have a, cons you could hire a consultant that's duties are much different than anything that you have. True, true. Yeah. Like if we hired a parking consultant. Right. Yeah, if they're I making a recommendation like without 
I only remember it being saying something like serving substantially in a staff capacity, which does not necessarily mean that it has to be similar to a position that you normally right. have. Just but then, yeah. but then also, if they are providing recommendations to a decision maker or a government body without significant substance yeah. review, but that's so sort of, that's irrespective of yeah. positions. I guess I'll go back to what I said before. I think, um, given our knowledge, we're we're at a good place. Well, the one thing still to me is maybe this should say by uh, amending the above policy. I, I agree with that. Or amending this policy because everything below is part of the policy too, right? Yes. Okay. 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 There's a, if you search for profit. In mine? Like yeah. In, okay. Um, could you put a dash between those two words? I'm okay with that, you. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Probably with the first and second. Is there any other public comment? Any other board comment? No. no, no. Yeah. Here. All right. Vote. Ethan? Aye. Metzer? Aye. J. Aye. Motion passes 3 0 at 9 50. 6 p.m. And then uh, I've now learned that I can just do this. And it will download cleanly. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Looking at our agenda, we were. Is there anything else we want to do on consider clarifications and modifications or conflict of interest policy? No. Uh, Consider policy slash procedures for hiring district staff slash contracting professional assistance. At the previous board meeting, we began looking at the process of acquiring legal and accounting services, and the formation committee has been working on the problem of, we really need a general manager. During this agenda item, we will consider policies for hiring and contracting. Apple, <laughs> the skunk is back. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 no. And I'm glad you noticed. I don't know why that door is we we are legally required to have. A I don't know where we got that information. Oh, I, I don't know where we got that information either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry. Uh, I think the last time me. we talked about it, it just amounted to, well, the board of supervisors leaves their door open, no, well, and okay. IBRPD kind of leaves that door open. Fifty percent. Anyway, back yeah, no. back to what we were saying. Right. Sorry okay. for my free. Yeah. Every time that you freak out because it's sunk. I have the same reaction, which is <laughs> <laughs> I just moaned. <laughs> what were you saying, Ethan, about the meeting? You started, I read that, and then you started saying something, and then we got interrupted multiple times, and then you were about to say something. Okay, all right, so during this agenda, we will consider policies for hiring and contracting assistance. So, um, Things that we could, for example, talk about are um, how we would, if we have multiple options, choose between them. Um, we could talk about contracts uh, that we have with them, how those contracts uh, uh, are formed and approved, and like what kinds of of um, uh, duration they'd have like do we do we hire people for terms um, Ethan first question has anyone um, come prepared with any draft language on this I did not I did not I did not then I think what we should do is similar to like what we did with the agenda at the last meeting maybe at this meeting we uh, brainstorm sections of policy that we'd want to implement okay. and at our next meeting Perhaps it's a special meeting. We um, perhaps it's a special meeting. We uh, we work on drafting. Yeah, because I think this is a pretty full <coughs> task. Yeah. Um, you know what am I doing? Um, so um, there's the issue of contracts. There's the issue of selection of staff slash professional assistants. Uh, what do you mean by select? You mean like choosing between options? Like Rec yeah, a okay. recommendation select or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm 
there would be the question of job description slash request for proposals slash uh, request for, well no, I guess request for quotes in the What was the first thing? Uh, job description. Job description. And I would say I think requests for quotes might be in a different policy just off of my very limited knowledge of like bidding law. Um, what else would be in this? <coughs> okay. Based upon my very limited and non-attorney knowledge of bidding law, it only applies to uh, public works contracts. Which is why it would make sense not to have it. When you said, um, what, what are we talking, what was the request for oh, quotes? Oh, the request for quotes is just a phrase about we wanted to um, Cause there is get a quote to put in a sidewalk or something. Yeah, the Board of Supervisors, I know, did have to use, but that could be county policy, did have to use um, a bidding process just to get like a voting machine. But they could also waive the stuff. Like they, they, there's an opportunity to waive bidding processes. Well, if you're waiving something, then it's definitely a policy right. and not. So under I think the bidding law. process that'll be a perfect thing for us to consider. Okay. But that's not involved in hiring and contracting people, because it's specific to I capital improvements and certain certain items you can buy. What about when there was the request for proposals for architects for the community center and different proposals? A request for proposals is different from a request for quotes. Okay. Maybe it's a distinction without a difference. Distinction? I don't know. This is just my, it, either way, we have requests for proposals in there. Okay. I just didn't want to broaden it too much and make it seem like we were about to be making a policy where we had to go in and look at public bidding law. Okay. We might consider policies that either enforce minimum or maximum wages of various forms on certain kinds of positions. Okay. We're allowed to actually talk about it, but it's not like it's not like I agenda. Know we're oh, yeah, I was just thinking. No. Okay. Right. Um, uh, well, maybe this would fall under selection of staff slash professional assistance, but. Um, like uh, selection committees. Okay. You raised your hand when I said maximum minimum wages. I thought you were going to Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> So we are looking at both contracting contractors and hiring employees? In this? In this? Yeah. OK. So. Um, and I would imagine the process might be slightly different, but not. Well, in some ways, the process can be extremely different because there's um, forms of like worker things related to disabilities and um, compensation uh, like worker compensation and um, like uh, occupational health and safety um, those are things that are uh, more specific to employees and some of those might be and might might fall into this not not all of what I just said but like okay like maybe benefits, for example, is something that would fall under the process well, of hiring. I think now, if this is, my understanding of this is 
this is a policy for the process of how to hire and contract and but that's like a, it's like it's like a like a part of the negotiation with a with a person over their compensation for the job would include like benefits for example that's true but all the other, what i'm saying is all the other things that we have whether it's contracts selection job description rfp selection committee maybe not minimum maximum wages that one i'm about to make a case that that's more of a personnel matter anyway like for a personnel policy but all these things are related to process and related to um internal um yeah the internal process of how the board does something rather than i was under the impression that the negotiation process with the person was the kind of thing that we were being directly asked to look at. I might be wrong though. Is that not your impression? I don't, honestly, I don't remember who recommended this. Guys. Okay. Okay. I think that the, the distinction between the negotiation, the negotiation process and the content of the negotiations is an important one. So not only point four, the minimum and maximum wages, but also point one, the contract. Those are very uh, specific to the particular jobs, rather than the selection committees, for example, and how they would be formed. You don't think that those would be specific to specific jobs? That the way that we select a general manager might be different than the way that we select a, a janitor? Fair, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think well, what we're tasked with doing here is creating things for onboarding, not so much for what happens after someone is chosen. I do think that we're focusing more on contracting than hiring, just or at least mm -hmm. maybe that we should be, just based on our current situation. One of the specific yeah. reasons I list minimum, and I'll actually defend the weirder one, which is why I list maximum wages, is that it changes the request for proposal process when you have when you specify that like look as a district we're just not interested in paying more than x amount and right. that both actually if that's the kind of thing that particularly if it requires a policy modification of a supermajority which is not the way we have it but like it's the kind of thing where you can actually lean on that as a look we're just, i'd have to get a super majority of my board to agree to give you more than we have to change our policies that's just ludicrous but like we we were willing to give you this much are you okay with that much well, I'm a, gives you a but for the now we're talking about the content of a proposal and rather than the structure of the proposal. Well, I, I'm looking at that as that is a policy that affects the process of contracting people. Is that it's and that, that's 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 why I listed. I'm just providing the description for why I, I bring it up. I but, think that's something that's fine for us all to consider before we meet next okay. and potentially go further with. Yeah. It. I don't have I should have asked Tad or something. So no, and here's the other thing I was going to say, kind of in response to what you said, which is that just because we have, you know, we're listing all these things and we're going to want to make a policy about it, doesn't mean that it has to be a one-size-fits-all policy. We can go and specify the difference between how we do the process for a position that is of importance or how we do the process uh, for something that is, oh, I think we, you know, like, you know, and it, not integral to the <laughs> functions of the, the day-to-day -day functions of the district. Um, so. Administrative assistant type stuff. And I will say also that I've only I haven't dug for this for that long in the policy library that CSDA has, but I'm initially not seeing anything that looks anything like this. So if anyone has any ideas on where we could at least start, 
Yeah. Please um, say it, because um, from here, I, I guess we're all just gonna have to go through complete policy manuals, which is fine. Yeah, I have um, I have a lot more research to do on this one. Employment opportunity, relocation benefits. Categories and classifications. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This table of contents was useful. Now go back. All right. So they've got here employment category classifications, compensation, pay policies, performance management, personnel records, problem resolution, termination, reemployment. How about employment, though? Yeah, that's basically that's a basically a personnel policy. Which isn't what we're trying to yeah, do. Yeah, right. No. This is sort of re-employment, not employment. What we're trying to do is procedures for employment slash contracting. And maybe we do focus in on the contracting since that seems to be more relevant to the district at this right. time. Human resource policies. I don't think that's it. Employment, chapter two. Employment categories and class. No, it's the same. That's just right. this is the higher level table of contents of where we, we only time off. I think security. we should all go do our research and come back on this. All right. Here's a policy manual that has the job descriptions of all of these positions listed in the policy manual. It's a fire district. Can I give up? All right. I don't say anything about contracts. So, it would be a hiring policy would be the closest thing to what we're kind of looking to do. Yeah, I was just I just knew that they that like the, the San Bernardino Lafco had this like ludicrously detailed like many hundreds of pages like five hundred page policy manual that <laughs> might that include maybe. somewhere in there. Yeah, <laughs> right. But they like, probably don't do a whole lot. Of, <laughs> I don't know, who knows. Well, they apparently have a whole thing on reemployment, but they don't have one on employment. We found, at least we found yet. <laughs> so uh, um, that's how I had to go here. All right. So we were so we're in this agenda to consider policies, and procedures for hiring district staff, contracting, professional assistance. So we're going to come back at our next meeting, our next regular meeting. We can probably determine that at the end, right? Probably. Do you think we can determine that at the end? Person who most picks on us for it? Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, okay, so any other yeah, any other comments that we want to have on number eight while we're here? I don't believe so. Okay, no. Um, let's go back then to number one. Consider modification to decorum policy. At our last regular board meeting, a member of the public requested clarification on our clause that one may be ejected from the meeting by refusing a request from the board chairperson. We will look at this class and can class. <laughs> clause. clause and consider clarifying the forms of requests that would be reasonable here. Um, and the clause in particular is something that we have from, uh, what is it called? It was, uh, no, it's, we removed the word slander, so it's not, that's not helpful. Um, we just modified the language again. Any director including the second emotion? No, not that one, not financial disclosure. We tried the accord. Didn't we change this at our 516 meeting? Oh, I'll check the agenda for it. I mean, the, the, this part of the agenda. Consider creation. No, this is not. No, is that our. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Rules of order is read and attached. Oh. We're supposed to have changed at our last meeting. Which part? The slander removed. We removed the word slander. We changed that sentence. Wasn't it the 516 meeting that removed the word slander? I'm not sure the date, but we did change that. Okay, let's look at this one. Go away. I put these in arbitrary orders when I do this. Look at my version of this, which is now 
scaring me. Okay, so we would have had another set of notes for this one here. change this. We will look at So our last meeting with this was 5-8, because we would have had a meeting two weeks after 5-8, which is today, which is 22. On 5-8, I remember us modifying the slander policy. see, however, is us modifying rules of order, modifying this is the conflict of interest policy. We got the work plan. And then I do have, I didn't upload that one yet. I was going to say, it's like I actually have video of my monitoring the, during that entire meeting. So. Well, today's clause, we at least still know. The, the issue that we have on the, on, uh, for today is that we are looking at, apparently spelling decorum wrong. No, wait, decorum? There we go, all right. Mage, uh, Refusing to abide by a request from the president. That is the specific wording that we are looking at today. Whether or not I have any wording that is related to any else that we were supposed to have, which I will figure out. I'm sorry, I was the minutes thing did not happen because I've just been I've been sick and I just I just couldn't I just couldn't do it. I was just like I'm gonna do it and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to sleep. I just I can't do this. But the the refusing to abide by the request from the president is the wording we're looking at today. The concern from Jeff Bard in his letter. Um, which I actually do have a copy of here, but which was sent to the entire board and which was read as public comment at our board meeting, um, was that the phrase, refusing to abide by a request from the president is so ludicrously general that what if the request from the president is, is that uh, please, sir, take off your hat. You did not take off your hat. I reject you from the meeting. Um, and so he wanted there to be some kind of limitation on this that said, for example, and he, he, even, he even provided to me, I believe he pretty sure he even provided to me the like, well, if it said like refusing to abide by a request from the president necessary to maintain order during the meeting, that that would solve the problem and would, uh, and would limit the kinds of ludicrous requests that the president could make. So good. Okay, so here's the problem is, is that I do not apparently seem to have a copy because I don't understand what had happened and I sucked this last like week and a half. Of, uh, of the current wording for the policy. Um, one thing that we can do is that I can figure it out and then I can bring, as Jay Freeman, a modification with this modification that is a full amendment with the full text with this changed. And then we can vote on that, which we would do anyway at the full board. Do we definitely want to change it though? I would like to change it. Um, I. It had before I had felt a little bit you know, iffy with it, and then it was like, oh well, it seems like a reasonable change. I think this is a reasonable change, 
Maybe you have a different reason why you wanted the clause. Well, what, you, what are you proposing we change it to? Necessary to maintain order during the meeting. It used to just say... We, we, can, we can make a recommendation yeah. to add that phrase to amend the policy. To oh, the oh so... Follow oh, the, I think, so I don't have the current wording. No, I actually, I like what you just did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. That's fine. I guess, okay. I didn't realize <laughs> that you're adding that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the exact current wording, but what it used to say, I mean, for the full sentence, but the particular clause that we're working with is refusing to abide by a request from the president. Okay, so you're going to bring this back to the board. And I'll bring it back to the board, adding necessary to maintain order during the meeting. Okay. If everyone know? seems okay with it. Yeah. Okay, so we're acting by the... I, 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 I got it. Okay, Thanks for doing that. We're that. not acting. I'm just going to do something unilaterally. Cool. But you, wait, you just deleted that. Oh. You're going to have that exact thing, right? Good. Good. Good call. I actually have a video of everything that is happening on my monitor. Okay. Great. Um, that's the cool... Yeah. I'm fun syncing those two audio files. Then. I did that. I actually, I already did all the sync. And I, the last, last meeting, I had like four or five videos because I kept redoing it. I had Kelsey's video. Oh, that was syncing. That was, that was, that was, I did that. What, what did you use to... I did it. Yeah. We can talk about that later. That's just... That's yeah. 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 Okay. Let's yeah. So, uh, all right. Uh, any public comment on this item? You seem like maybe you're interested, but maybe you're not anymore. <laughs> I like the change. All right. I think that you as a board here could definitely just move to recommend that rather than having Jay do this weird loop-de-loop. -loop. Yeah, well, it's just because I don't know what the... Yeah, but you could just say yeah, amend that phrase well, to this Well, watch what ends up happening is maybe, maybe there's, like, instead of, like, refusing to, maybe, maybe like, this got moved over to the left, refusing to this, that, this, or abide by the president. And so it's, like, I guess we could, I guess we could like, limit it to just abide by the request from the president. I, I like what we discussed before, yeah. and that's in line with our policy for adopting and amending. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. All right, and I know the spotlight. Uh, go back to here. So back to policy. Uh, so that means we're seeing like that was your comment. Done with one. We already did all these other ones. So now we can scroll all the way down to consider a new regular meeting date. Or do you want to do the 10 first? Maybe, maybe 10 should have been first. I'll with nine. All right. Consider a new regular meeting date. So there's two reasons why potentially to have a new regular meeting date. Yeah, maybe two and a half. But so one thing is, is that the progressive Santa Barbara progressive. Oh my God, I'm coalition. Kidding. It's just co. Oh yeah, I know what I know why I think. I was like, I thought it was progressive something coalition, but I remember why. It's because for some reason in my mind, it's the progressive coalition meeting. It always ends in meeting. Uh, is on um, is on Mondays, uh, and it seems to fall every other Monday, and it seems to always fall on our Monday. And so I know that Spencer was actually um, like important at that meeting, and other people had even commented to me that yeah, Spencer seems to be taking a leadership role at that meeting. That's really awesome. And then Spencer now suddenly can't go to that meeting because we scheduled this on top of it. Um, and then the other one is that, and this is not going to be relevant for another two months, I believe. But the California Special Districts Association local meeting is on the fourth Monday of months, and so that was I was unable to go to that last month, and I was like, yeah, okay. But so at some point, I will be more interested in moving this. Um, but those are the two reasons. One thing we could do is we could move it. Another option is that we could punt moving this until the end of the quarter because that people's schedules change drastically at the end of the quarter, and we will suddenly have lots more options for dates, and we will suddenly I would, have I would favor that. reasons to change things anyway. All right? I like that. Okay, so I will bring this back when uh, when the quarter ends. We can look at this more. Uh, any public comment? Okay, option number no, no, option. Agenda item 10. Consider updates to policy committee work plan. As we will have spent an evening working on policies, we may come to a new understanding of the work cut out for us in the future. Any changes we have will be considered as updates to our plan. Do I need a keyword that works? Star work. Star, no, star, no, star, no, there we go, no, there. All right. This is our work plan. So, purpose, authorities, officers, meetings, agendas, minutes, order. Action of decisions. Do we want to agendize anything from our work plan? Do we want to change it? Do we, do we, do we want to like 
I was asked to make this a standing agenda item. Yeah. That's, yeah. I'll just clarify why we're doing this process. If anyone's looking at me wondering what the hell are we doing. Um, uh, we don't have on our work plan, if, we, if this matters, hiring and contracting people. Should that be part of our work plan? Mm. I don't think that's a board policy. Or it doesn't seem to me like that. Would oh, be because this was a board, board policy work plan. That's right. OK. So So it'll be a floater. All right. So do we, 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 have we, a we don't have updates floaters. to work plan? Just OK. Yeah. All right, public comment. Seeing none. We do not have updates to the policy committee work plan, future agenda items. So what I've got so far is looking at sunshine ordinances. We've got a continuing conversation on hiring and contracting with more understanding, more detail, although maybe we want to be special in or something. Um, we've got no, no. That's all I've got. Okay. Um, review updated draft policy manual. We Good haven't done idea. that in a mile. It haven't done that in a while and should. Yep. Approve the minutes of this meeting or, or yeah, of the last the minutes meeting. Of, yeah. <coughs> I think that our uh, hiring and contracting is going to take up a large part of this next meeting. Agreed. Um, but I'm sure I will think of some more things that I'll be happy to give you a call about. All right. Uh, anything else, Sensor? Something I can think of right now. Okay. Public I comment. agree that that thing's going to be a huge one that we work on. Okay. So. Public comment? Seeing none. We are done with future agenda items. Moving on to item 12, adjourn. The process of ending a meeting is formal and requires an adjournment. During this item, the committee will vote on whether it is appropriate to end the meeting and if it will be continued. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Is that, I move to adjourn, I guess? Friendly. Okay. Is that friendly? With no. You? Yeah, it's friendly. You don't have to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, the uh, vote, Ethan? Public. Oh, public comment on adjournment? <laughs> no, thanks. Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay? Aye. Motion passes 3 0. We adjourn. I adjourn this meeting at 10 28 p.m. Uh, our next meeting uh, is on the not two weeks, but three weeks, right? So our next meeting. Not that, not that that actually changes our schedule. It's just it just suddenly occurred to me that I can't just add stuff. Um, our next meeting is May, sorry, June twelfth. Correct. At six thirty p.m. Right here. Okay.